。早晨啊，各位同事，我哋。Good morning, members. This is the appointed time, and we have a quorum. So this is the panel on health services, and we will hold this meeting via Zoom. Members, please note that you must turn on the video camera of Zoom and show your face on the screen. The mic, however, will only be switched on on my instruction. During the meeting, if members would like to submit papers, please do so. Via the uh, or please do so via the email uh, address panel underscore hs at logical dot gov dot hk. So, item one on the agenda: information papers issued since the last meeting. We issued one paper. Details are set out in the agenda. So I'll skip that. Next date of the next meeting and items for discussion. The list of outstanding items for discussion has been issued via paper CB bracket four seventy five slash twenty twenty two bracket O one, as well as O two. On Monday, I had a meeting with the administration as well as、uh, deputy chair, and we drafted the latest list of、uh, follow up actions. The next. Meeting is scheduled for the eleventh of March, twenty twenty-two, Friday, at ten forty-five. The administration proposes to discuss two items: one, declaration of mental hospital consolidation amendment of scheduled order twenty twenty-two, and B, three projects under the first ten-year hospital development plan, and progress of other development or hospital development plans. So, if there are no other suggestions from members, yes, Mr. Lee Sai Wing, is it a comment on next month's agenda? Sorry, I just pressed the wrong button. Okay, Mr. Bill Tang. Is is it coming through? Yes, I have a point. I'm not a member, but I think that members are concerned that、uh, we might need a help from the central people's government. So at the next meeting, perhaps we should discuss, or rather, receive a report from the administration on CPG's assistance, because、um, that agenda item relates to a longer-term issue, whereas we have something imminent at hand. So, Chairman, let's see if you will take my suggestion. Well, I think I'm. I keep in view、uh, this issue every day. And if the, a universal program is to be introduced, I'm sure that the chief executive will not wait until the eleventh next month. So, Mr. Tang, sorry to say that I don't think we need to put this item on next month's agenda. We will deal with the this imminent issue.、Uh, Immediately when it arises, if there are no other comments, these will be the two issues we discuss next time. Now, I'd like to explain to members that、uh, I only call for special meetings if it is really necessary. It's not my practice to call for special meetings, but then if you really want to discuss a special issue. Uh, you can do so before we move on to the agenda item proper. Say we can have、uh, fifteen minutes or half an hour to discuss these issues, so that we can have value for money and we don't have to call for many meetings. Item three: briefing by the Secretary for Food and Health on the Chief Executive's 2021 policy address. All members have been invited to take part in the discussion of this item. To allow members to speak in a smooth and orderly、uh, and fair manner, I would ask the staff to clear all the virtual hand indicators right now. All clear.
All right, members, if you want to speak, you can now press the virtual hand on Zoom, and I will invite members to speak in turn. We'll discuss this item from 10.30 to 12, and then from 12 to 1, we have another item. And I think that uh, members will be more interested to discuss that item. I need to, therefore, strictly uphold the uh, speaking time limit. Please make sure you're succinct in your question and allow time for the administration to answer. So if you've used up your four minutes asking your question, please ask for a written reply. On the other hand, I would invite, invite the public officers to speak succinctly so that we all observe the four-minute speaking time limit. So, Secretary, please walk us through the electrical paper CB bracket 475 slash 2022 bracket 03. Thank you, Chairman. I'm delighted to be able to attend this first meeting of the Panel on Health Services in the seventh term of Legislative Council. To safeguard public health and further improve the standard of health services, this term of government will continue to work in a focused manner and allocate resources in the following areas. First, primary health care. Following the opening of the Kwai Cheng and Shamshui Port District Health Centers, or DHCs, in September 2019 and June 2021, the DHCs in Wang Tai Sin, Chun Mun, Southern District, Yunlong, and Chun Wan are expected to commence operation gradually within this year. DHC Express Service in 11 districts have commenced operation progressively starting from the end of September 2021. Now, on supporting chronic disease screening and management, the government is launching a pilot public-private partnership program at Cham Shui Po DHC. DHC members who are diagnosed with diabetes, mellitus, or hypertension for the first time will be referred to the network doctors for receiving government-subsidized medical consultation and allied health services. The government will publish a blueprint for the sustainable development of primary health care services in Hong Kong within the current term of government and through enhancing manpower planning and training, enhancing health surveillance and sharing of health records, and also uh, other initiatives in the five directions we set out, we aim to establish a primary health care system that improves the health of all, uh, the health for all, and enhances the quality of living of the people. The second area is continuous improvements to the public health care system. To maintain the remarkable efficiency, professionalism, and high adaptability of the healthcare system in Hong Kong, we need to make continuous improvements in multiple aspects. On the one hand, we'll consider strengthening the core functions of the Department of Health in formulating and implementing public health strategies, as well as monitoring and facilitating the development of health technology and research and the development of drugs so as to enhance its capability to cater for the future development of society and public health. On the other hand, we'll continue to support the hospital authority to expand and upgrade inpatient healthcare services, develop and make good use of innovative technology to improve efficiency and quality. Third area, prevention and control of diseases. We will review the implementation experience of the first Hong Kong Strategy and Action Plan on Antimicrobial Resistance 2017 and to 2022 and draw up the second plan to map out response strategies of the next phase. We'll also actively pursue the action items in the Hong Kong Viral Hepatitis Action Plan 2020 to 2024. We've rolled out the Breast Cancer Screening Pilot Program to provide risk-based screening services for eligible women from September 2021. On mental health, we've launched the mental health Uh, sorry, no signals coming through. Secretary, your voice isn't coming through.
局長睇到。Secretary, I see your screen, but I can't hear you. Chairman, am I coming through? Yes. Chairman, I'll speed up. On mental health, we've launched the mental health initiatives funding scheme and invited NGOs and tertiary institutions to submit proposals. The funding scheme is implemented by two phases. A total of about $100 million has been granted to 70 projects under phase one of the scheme to enhance mental well-being of citizens in the community through various services and programs. The approved projects will commence between February and April in 2022. Details about phase two of the funding scheme will be announced in the second half of 2022. On development of Chinese medicine, the government will continue to deploy regular resources for the uh, development of Chinese medicine, which includes preparatory work for the commissioning of the Chinese Medicine Hospital and the Government Chinese Medicines Testing Institute. The government will continue to provide quotas for government-subsidized Chinese medicine outpatient services at 18 Chinese medicine clinics come training and research centers. The HA is exploring enhancement of the integrated Chinese Western medicine inpatient services. The government is conducting a review on the overall implementation of the $500 million Chinese medicine De development fund with a view to further enhancing the subsidy schemes and utilization of resources. With a view to furthering the long-term development of the Chinese medicine sector, the government will explore empowering Chinese medicine practitioners to prescribe diagnostic radiology, such as x-ray and lab tests for their patients. With the support of central government will continue to encourage Hong Kong's Chinese medicine sector to seize the opportunities in furthering their development in the GBA and actively participate in the construction of CM Highlands in the uh, GBA. To ease the financial burden of patients requiring long-term medication, the government and NXA have further refined the means test mechanism of the Samaritan Fund and the Community Care Fund medical assistance programs to support patients. The pilot phase of the Hong Kong Genome Project has commenced. The main phase of the project will commence in 2022. Around 50,000 whole genome sequencing will be conducted. The project will enhance, will enhance, uh, will hence promote clinical application and innovative scientific research on genome medicine locally. In the long term, benefits uh, will be given to patients from more accurate diagnosis and more personalized treatment. We've also completed public consultation on legislative proposals on advanced directives and dine in place in relation to end of care, end of life care services. Relevant law drafting work is underway. On sustainable development of the healthcare system, we've been making a lot of effort. The Medical Registration Amendment Bill 2021 was passed in the Legislative Council in October 2021 to enable qualified and non-locally trained doctors to serve in Hong Kong's public health care organizations under special registration, thereby increasing our overall manpower supply of doctors. To safeguard patients' interests and ensure professional competency, we will make legislative amendments to allow patients to have direct access to healthcare professional services such as physiotherapy and occupational therapy without a doctor's referral. We will legislate to make continuing professional education and or continuing professional development a mandatory requirement for supplementary medical professionals under the Supplementary Medical Professions Ordinance as well as nurses and dentists. We will also explore the feasibility of introducing a statutory registration regime for those healthcare professionals who are currently not subject to any reg statutory registration requirements. On supporting development of life and health technology, it's also a key area. Clinical data, clinical trials, and drug registration are some of the key areas essential to the development of the technology. The HA will provide a dedicated structure to facilitate more institutions to explore the potential use of healthcare data and R&D collaboration with the HA and make use of a wider network of HA hospitals for research and clinical trial purposes. Although, uh, Also, the government will expedite the legislative process for registering drugs containing new chemical or biological entity under the pharmacy and poisons regulations to support development of life and health technology. Our t of course, our top priority at the moment remains making an all-out effort 
in order to contain the epidemic. We'll continue to uphold the strategy of preventing importation of cases and resurgence of local infection. We'll suitable, uh, suitably adjust our anti-epidemic strategy based on science and practical experience. To enhance the effectiveness of governance, under reorganization of the government structure, the chief executive has put forward a number of initiatives in the 2021 policy address delivered on the 6th of October 2021, including five initial ideas about reorganizing the government structure to better complement the policy focuses of the Hong Kong SAR government and meet social expectations. The chief executive has already briefed the council on the latest reorganization proposal, including revamping the Food and Health Bureau as the Health Bureau, which will be dedicated to medical and health policies. That concludes my presentation, Chairman. Relating to the 2021 policy address, my team and myself would be happy to take questions from members. The head of uh, PECO is also in attendance. Apart from um, representatives from the Food and Health Bureau, the uh, Hospital Authority and the Department of Health, we will take members' views on the reorganization proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Bureau Director. Now, let me first um, say a few words about those who have raised their hands. Uh, as I can see, um, everyone will be allowed to speak for four minutes, including both questions and answers. So, Bureau Director and your colleagues, uh, please also make sure that you would uh, speak within that uh, uh, time allowed. And uh, please uh, make sure that our questions will be asked in um, a very precise and concise manner. And I can understand that uh, while you are on Zoom, you might not be um, staying in your place uh, all the time, but then, um, um, well, if you can indicate uh, uh, what you want uh, to us, uh, then that would also be helpful. So for those who have raised their hands, I'll read out the order of um, speakers. Uh, Xiu Kao Fai, Leng Mei Fan, uh, Michael Tian, uh, Lei Sai Men, Chen Pui Leng, Tan Ka Piu, uh, Elizabeth Kuot, uh, Regina Ip, uh, Chen Yong, Leng Men Kong, Wong Guok, Chen Hoi Yan, uh, Chen Hang Pen, Chen Kin Po, Leng Hei, Yao Tat Ken, Alice Mack, and uh, um, Holden Chow. So, four minutes, uh, so that would uh, take up to some 72 minutes. So, that would uh, take us to around uh, 12 uh, midday. And also, Mr. Yu Park Leng. Yu Park Leng, so altogether, 18 or 19 members will be speaking. So, Xiu Ka Fai. Thank you, Chairman. First, um, on, food on food supply, well, a couple of days ago, as we know, uh, uh, vegetable prices uh, spiked, uh, and uh, because um, truck drivers have been tested positive and therefore they have been uh, quarantined, and uh, no vegetables were allowed uh, across the border. So I would I have been monitoring the situation closely in the past couple of days, and I've been talking to those uh, vendors and also wholesalers and so on. Thanks to the government, go the government has finally come up with uh, a solution that is uh, for truck drivers uh, to test uh, before they go uh, across the boundary, and. Um, that would also be helpful because uh, all those who would be crossing the boundary will have been tested negative. And, um, well, vegetable supply has uh, been back to normal. And according to what I've been told today, well, uh, prices have been um, back to normal today. So whatever measures uh, are taken by the administration, so long as there, have, there can be minor adjustments, uh, that would have huge impacts uh, on people's livelihood. What we can see today, well, during the past uh, couple of days, people have been lining up everywhere. So. Uh, you have also introduced uh, new ways of giving them chips in advance. But then uh, I think that has to do with uh, the um, uh, registration with your real identity. Well, whoever has uh, got the chip, then they would just uh, have to follow the uh, timeline when they have to be there again. And then, of course, uh, you can ask somebody else uh, to get the chip on your behalf. But then uh, I can see that uh, uh, there are ways uh, where you can check uh, where you stand uh, in terms of the queue. Um, online, but then uh, you would also have to make sure that there would be no speculation of chips uh, whatsoever, because that's very uh, immoral. Because if there are interests uh, involved, uh, then you would also have to make sure that the police would take a take action accordingly. And then, um, for example, if there are patients who have been tested positive, and now you're suggesting that they should stay put or stay home while they're waiting for further instruction from the authorities, but then. 
who is going to take care of um, their daily necessities, for example, food supply and so on. And uh, if they stay home, will they be infected? Will they be infecting their family members? And if they have to stay in a room, and then do they have to? Can they open their windows? And if they open their windows, will they be infecting others in the um, neighborhood? So. You said that uh, well, the National Commission has been sending people here to help us. So will you be doing a uni universal testing so that everybody will be testing, will be tested? Uh, Bureau Director, well, there are quite a few questions. First, well, actually, our next, agen uh, our next agenda or item will be talking about the pandemic situation. But then thanks to Mr. Xiu, you're very concerned about the uh, queuing situation and also the bottleneck situation. With regard to queuing for testing, we have been working very hard uh, to deal with that uh, at source because we have been increasing um, the capacity of uh, testing and also the number of testing centers will also increase. Uh, so that's what we have been doing. And of course, uh, the uh, law and order situation on the ground and uh, how we can make sure that uh, people will be doing so in an orderly manner. We have also been setting up special uh, care teams uh, for those in need. So we are doing our best uh, to ease the situation. And um, some small teams and volunteers have been sent to the uh, centers uh, to help. But then uh, with the increase, uh, in a capacity that would ultimately be the uh, solution to the problem. And also, for those who have been tested uh, um, positive presumptively, uh, we don't have any isolation procedures right now, but then they understand that they have to wait at home, and uh, the HA will also be um, trying its best, uh, and we've been working with um, the fire services department so that uh, we need the vehicles uh, to send the people to the hospitals. And therefore, right now, um, there is uh, a bottleneck, and they are stuck at home. We have also given them. We have uh, also been giving them instructions. For example, they will have to wear their face masks while they stay at home, and also they would also have to make sure that they would not be infecting others. What about universal testing? Well, the situation right now is that uh, we will try our best uh, to do whatever we can, and therefore, at different districts, uh, we have uh, compulsory testing notices and so on. And what we are trying to do is to increase the capacity of testing. If we are able to do so, then uh, we will be able to expand that further. Thank you. Next, Priscilla Lung. Thank you, Chairman. Well, in the Greater Bay Area, with regard to the mutual assistance and collaboration between the two sides. I think we need to have uh, some short, medium, and long-term measures. I think the most important thing is to work together to fight the pandemic, because this is our biggest uh, enemy. We cannot just uh, fight it alone, and therefore we will have to work together. And I think the Hong Kong teams have not been able to take advantage of the uh, support uh, from the um, mainland uh, in dealing with this uh, crisis. I think that's the biggest problem because uh, you can't even take a step further right now. Well, um, on the 27th of December, you said that in terms of fighting the pandemic, uh, we'll be doing an all-out approach uh, in terms of fighting it. But then within just uh, a month or so, Omicron has been able to sneak in and it's been spreading very extensively. And uh, our healthcare system simply cannot cope. And there are people queuing up uh, for hours and um, even at uh, uh, Princess Margaret Hospital, people have to wait for long hours, and uh, we find it heartbreaking. All right, uh, it's like that uh, it's quite apparent that our system has collapsed. So you will have to take advantage of the advantage of the QBA, of the GBA, so that you should ask the mainland authorities to deploy their teams uh, to Hong Kong, so that within seven days, uh, we will have to expand our Hong Kong version of the uh, makeshift uh, hospital so that our capacity can be increased to 10,000 so that people do not have to wait uh, out there uh, weathering the cold weather. And also, well, people, some people simply are not able to take the first uh, dose of the jab, and therefore they are very worried. And also, third, we have been talking about uh, compulsory testing. Yes, you don't have enough uh, manpower to do it. But then if you can ask the main authorities to help, well, they have already made it clear that uh, whatever uh, is needed, uh, including food supply and so on, they are able to do it at very short notice. So all you need to do is to just uh, ask for help. 
it's not just uh, from the Guangdong province. Uh, other provinces can also help because you need a lot of manpower right now. I think uh, they are willing to help. So our motherland will definitely be very concerned about Hong Kong and they will be more than happy to help. And therefore, everybody is thinking about this, including some religious groups. We've been talking about this. We will be offering something like, um, well, vacant uh, campsite. And then there are also very, there are also uh, uh, vacant uh, school campuses so that uh, you can make use of those uh, for the patients who are in need of help. So Priscilla, do you want to give them time to answer? Yes. Okay, Bureau Director. Thank you, um, uh, Ms. Leung, for your question. I think uh, whether it's lawmakers, uh, the government, and also everybody in the community, we are all very concerned about the pandemic situation. And the government has been working very hard. Uh, we have been working um, or doing our level best uh, to deal with the situation. With regard to the questions raised by Ms. Priscilla Leung, it's about healthcare professionals. Yes, indeed, uh, if you look at it from the treatment perspective, the HA has been keeping or maintaining the current health care system. Sorry, Chairman, I'd just like to find out, well, why don't you allow her some time to answer? Well, I'll just turn turn off her microphone. We don't want her to speak any further. Yes, Bureau Director, please uh, go on. Yes, um, as you might be aware, it's been suggested uh, by the main authorities that uh, we have actually had a meeting with them, and the Chief Secretary for Administration was the leader of the team. So we'll be con we will be liaising with them as to what is needed, and we are very grateful to the uh, state uh, for its concern for us, and uh, we'll be working together so that we can cope or fight the pandemic together. We'll be uh, liaising or coordinating our policies and initiatives. Yes, indeed, uh, you can still ask questions when we are on the next agenda item. You can also jot down the questions uh, asked by Priscilla Lung, and then you can respond to that later. I will still permit um, members to ask questions, but then I understand that you're very concerned about this, but please make sure that you won't be wasting the three, four minutes to express your personal views and then leaving no time for the bureau director to answer the questions. Next, uh, Michael Tian. Thank you, Chairman. Bureau Director, well, we are talking about exponential increase in terms of the uh, infection numbers, and uh, with further investigation, I'm sure there will be more infection cases, and hospitals are finding it hard to cope, and many people have to stay home to receive treatment. And therefore, I think the most important thing right now is to ensure that uh, for those serious cases, uh, the number should not go up any further. So first, uh, I'm most concerned about those uh, in elderly homes. Uh, apparently, the uh, the uh, vaccination rate is very low. It's only about 20 percent, and there are already um, uh, asymptomatic um, patients uh, who might be transmitting the diseases, and therefore outreaching teams should be sent to the elderly homes in order to do the vaccination. I think that's the most important thing, because uh, by March, if they're not able to take the jab, then um, can we um, ask the, Nash to the state uh, to deploy people to help with the vaccination process, because uh, I'm very concerned about the elders. If they are not vaccinated, uh, then they are very vulnerable. And therefore, can you do it uh, in a couple of weeks? Uh, if uh, needs be, then you can ask the National um, Commission to help. And also for the compulsory testing, well, when I asked you on Tuesday as to why there cannot be two team, there could not be two teams because uh, for uh, public house, public estates, uh, they can uh, wait uh, in the centre, and then uh, in the very same evening, uh, some experts said that uh, if they can just uh, use the testing kits uh, on their own, that would be acceptable. But then you will also have to consider. Well, if they have to do the tests um, on their own, I've received uh, complaints that after they have been uh, they have given their samples. All right, they've been told that they can use uh, the uh, the self test uh, kit, but then you're talking about uh, hundreds of uh, billions of dollars uh, being spent um, on other areas. But still, apparently, you are uh, you're short of uh, those uh, little kits. About seeking the central government's help, my concern is Mobile Cabin Hospital. Will you request CPG to send staff over to build Mobile Cabin Hospitals to increase the supply of hospital beds as much as they can, so that well, 
right. I don't think you need to um, further your argument in detail. Secretary, be succinct. Chairman, one more point. No, I have no time for her to answer all three questions of yours. If there's still time, you'll be uh, given uh, the time to uh, ask again. Four questions, Chairman. About vaccination in RCHE. The Labor and Welfare Bureau and the Social Welfare Department are making an all-out effort. On the one hand, regarding RCHE staff, we've distributed RAT test kits so that they will not be uh, in any way infecting elderly residents. And together with the Labor and Welfare Bureau, we will uh, speed up uh, our vaccination rollout in elderly care homes. Now, the Labor and Welfare Bureau has actually arranged doctors to visit these homes. About queuing up, as I explained, on the one hand, we need to increase the number of testing centers, and this is underway. The other point is to tackle the problem at source and increase our capacity. We've been talking to different service operators, requesting them to step up their testing capacity. Preparation is underway. On the third point, of course, we need to maintain order of queues. And the government has dispatched teams and voluntary workers uh, to help out at the district level. And we also have the mechanism of distributing uh, quota discs and setting up special care teams. About specimen bottles, we are procuring in vast quantities rapid antigen test kits because we believe we will be able to expedite the testing process in large quantities. At the same time, we will hold a meeting with the mainland authorities. Now, the chief secretary and the chief executive are holding uh, meetings to discuss the necessary resources. And of course, we'll consider the facility you mentioned. The mobile cabin hospital is not on the agenda of the meeting which you will hold with the mainland authorities in coming few days. We are doing the liaison work in the moment. Next, talk, uh, Mr. Stanley Lee. Thank you, Chairman. Paragraph 36 of the paper refers to emerging from the epidemic. Of course, this is uh, an issue close to our heart. Now, my question is this. A few days ago, the government announced its stay home safe scheme, which means home quarantine. And at the moment, uh, members of the public are in a panic because of uh, unclear information. For those under quarantine and isolation, the housing estates where they lived uh, have not received instruction and guidelines. Say if a resident is subject to home quarantine, how should these units be handled? The property management companies would like to disinfect the relevant uh, places. Now, the government refuses to disclose the exact units involved, and the Privacy Commissioner yesterday commented that there is actually no such a restriction um, if the uh, reason is to safeguard public health. Now, can the government inform the property management of housing estates as uh, perhaps via the district offices to uh, cleanse and disinfect the building and make meal a uh, delivery arrangements. There are voluntary organizations which are willing to take the risk in delivering meals as they would not um, want the community to bear the risk instead. So can the, inf can the um, dissemination of information be enhanced? The other point is about private hospitals. No vaccine is available at private hospitals. Can we solve this problem? This is the message I received yesterday. Even private clinics are unable to procure uh, vaccines to help needy citizens. Third point, now foreign domestic helper got infected after going out and then infected the household. And we did receive message 
urging foreign domestic helpers to stay in, but this is not a mandatory requirement. So how can you achieve the purpose? Right, you're repeating your point. Uh, Secretary, over to you. Chairman, I will invite the Department of Health to answer the first two questions. Stay home safe is um, a topic we have held a brief briefing with the property management sector already. Department of Health. Thank you, Chairman. Yes? Yes. Let me respond to Mr. Lee's question on stay home safe scheme. The purpose is to provide a quarantine arrangement for close contacts or um, household contacts of close contacts. The purpose is to help vacate places in the Penny Bay Quarantine Centre so that positive cases can be sent over to um, Penny Bay, whereas uh, other confinees can stay home for home quarantine. Now we focus on three elements. The first point is health management. In other words, the confinees will be required to um, self-monitor their health situation on a daily basis and inform us uh, of any irregularity. The second point is uh, support services. Now for rapid antigen test results, the confinees can upload the uh, result via mobile phone to the government uh, database. The third point is that we help with uh, replenishing supplies for them. We take a people-centric approach because uh, relatives are in the best position of uh, providing what they need to them. And that is why we're enlisting the help of uh, family and friends. Now, the other point is uh, property management. The confinees may have made online purchases and th that uh, the parcels may have to be delivered by the property management staff. The other point is for online shopping services or um, voluntary organizations. In fact, any organizations which would like to help out with deliveries, they could do so directly. But one point to note is that for different scenarios, we have prepared different guidelines so as to avoid face-to-face -face contact in their support service as much as they can. Responding to your last question about the supply of vaccines available um, for private clinics, the supply has decreased and we have actually talked to private doctors in short, we have a hotline for private doctors to place orders. We also have an email corresponding address uh, and that the uh, procurement will be delivered in advance. However, in view of the spike in the demand for vaccines, some clinics all of a sudden uh, cannot get the procurement they need. Now, please approach us, uh, call our hotline, and we'll try to deliver the vaccines to them as quickly as possible. I want to reassure everyone that we have an adequate supply of vaccines. What about foreign domestic helper? Do you have a reply, uh, Secretary? Yes, we have tightened the uh, pro uh, prohibition on group gathering from four to two. That's one point. And in the previous weekends, the police and the FEHD step up effort targeting places where um, foreign domestic helpers uh, usually gather. Chen Pui Leung, uh, Bill Tang, Elizabeth Quad uh, are the three next, mem uh, next three members to speak. Mr. Chen, two questions. First, about preventing importation of cases. Now, the virus can stay alive on um, articles and objects for a long time. In terms of uh, shipment uh, and consignment coming inbound, is there any disinfection? Uh, another point is about contact tracing, the contact tracing offices. There are three offices at the moment. We have close to 1,000 confirmed cases daily. 
how many staff members are operating these three contact tracing offices and what is the capacity of these offices. Will we be able to cope with the uh, rising number of confirmed cases? If we're lagging behind, then is contact tracing still an effective way of combating the epidemic? Let me take the first question, and the Department of Health will take the question on contact tracing office. We're concerned about transmission of virus from objects to humans. The Center for Health Protection targets frozen meat and food items by conducting random inspection on arrival of the consignments and we also educate staff and importers of a frozen food and we also require them to undergo regular testing so as to ensure safety. Director of Health, thank you Chairman. We've set up three contact tracing offices. The maximum uh, as at this peak over 200 discipline services staff can work at each of the three offices so altogether we have 600 staff members now contact tracing is indeed a very daunting challenge uh, especially in face of the rapid surge in the number of cases we continue to uphold the strategy of um, early, early identification early testing and early uh, isolation and treatment. The response to the epidemic is not just about contact tracing and quarantine. We also need to rely on other means such as testing, such as increasing social distancing as the overall anti-epidemic strategy. Indeed, we're facing a huge pressure. However, Apart from um, testing and quarantine strategy, we also have, uh, say, restriction testing declaration, um, lockdown of buildings, and through these exercises, we're able to obtain information about high-risk places so that we can take a targeted uh, follow-up uh, follow action. As far as further tightening social distancing rule is concerned, we hope to reduce uh, the flow of people. Sorry, Director. Director, I don't think you are a regular at our panel meetings. You need to be succinct. The member asked a question. That is, do you have sufficient manpower to uh, take up a contact tracing work? And actually, I have another question. If you say we have sufficient manpower, you need to tell us the uh, capacity, the maximum capacity, and uh, if there is a uh, another outbreak, uh, until what stage will you reach uh, capacity? Contact tracing, at this moment we can deploy sufficient manpower. And we also, ha we, we still have room to increase manpower. But because of the rapid growth uh, in the number of cases, we do have um, a lot of pressure. We still have some 1,000 ca untraceable cases. So I would say the contact tracing is underway and is, we, are, we are indeed lagging behind. However, we need to have other measures to support us. And if these measures are appropriate, for example, social distancing, and uh, all right, all right, I understand. I I'm sorry, director. I don't. Uh, I can't let you go on ranting about uh, contact tracing. Next member, Mr. Bill Tang. Mr. Bill Tang, are you here? Your mic is not on. I see your face, but the mic is not on. Sorry, Chairman. Please reset the timer. No, you, <laughs> you are taking up our time. I'll deduct it from your time limit. Paragraph 36. The government will uphold the strategy of Im preventing importation of cases and preventing resurgence of local infection with a scientific attitude. Now, my question is, first of all, under your strategy, 
we have received a lot of complaints from um, members of the public. They called 999 and uh, they, 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 they have become confirmed cases. But the hospital uh, just uh, instructed them to take public transport home to uh, go under cor home quarantine. Is it against his strategy? And about stay home safe, home quarantine. Uh, subdivided units included, I have a case. We have a household of six with, I mean, a unit of six with two families sharing communal kitchen and toilets, and they have several family members having fever already, and they were only given painkillers. We have a, we have a list such as a cough med, cough syrup, a disinfectant. Uh, solutions, etc. Well, I don't need guidelines. We need more support, Secretary. Now, uh, the case I cited is it in line with the stay home, stay home safe model? You and also, you will have to make sure that there will be no rebounds in the number of uh, infection cases. Well, twelve uh, testing sites uh, and centers have been set up, and you, they can also use the machine to distribute uh, chips and so on. But then, um, in Lamtin. The uh, service reservoirs uh, testing center had uh, up to a thousand people lining up a couple of days ago. So how can you resolve the problem? Yes, Bureau Director, I'll defer to the HA to answer the first question, and the D of H will answer the second question. And then the Under Secretary has been following up on the uh, queuing situation and also the distribution of uh, this and so on. So um, we'll answer all the three questions uh, um, one by one. Okay, HA first. Yes, uh, good morning, everyone. With regard to the patients uh, who have to queue up for um, a long time before they can be tested, uh, I'd like to apologize for that. Uh, well, generally speaking, well, the DFH uh, teams uh, will make arrangements uh, for people or patients uh, to go to the isolation facilities to be uh, isolated. But then with the surge in the number of cases, uh, well, very often they will go to the A and A department on their own, and if there is a need for them to be hospitalized, then of course arrangements will be made, or else uh, uh, we can only ask them to go home, and uh, if uh, possible, we will arrange uh, for ambulances to take them home. But then uh, uh, it's hard uh, to make such arrangements in some instances, and therefore they can only go go home uh, on alternative uh, transport modes. And of course, uh, they will have to minimize contacts uh, with other people, and they will also have to make arrangements uh, for their own transport. Uh, so that's the best uh, that we can do. Next, uh, D H. Yes, sir, about uh, stay home safe. Yes, sir, there are certain conditions that have to be met. We will have to assess uh, as to who should stay home and sh who should go to the quarantine centers. Well, assuming that they're staying in subdivided flats and if, if they have to share certain facilities with other tenants, then of course the situation is not very uh, satisfactory. And if you understand that there are situations whereby patients or uh, those who have been tested positive are staying in subdivided flats. Uh, please do let us know. We will take follow-up measures. Well, um, what about subdivided flats uh, tenants? Well, um, member, please uh, pass it on to us. Uh, we will follow up on this. Because uh, when we call the hotline, it's not answered. We have not been able to reach you. You can contact me directly. So please uh, contact me directly. Next question. Under Secretary, can you answer that question too? So as to when? You can do it uh, across the territory. Yes, we have a team following up on this. So, for example, on the um, automatic uh, dis distribution machine. So, in the process, uh, I'd like to emphasize that uh, we have already been uh, doing that. Uh, we, are, we are already installing that at all the centers so that our priorities will be given to those uh, who are in need. All right, uh, are you planning to do that um, um, throughout the territory? Because in terms of manpower and also the machinery that will be needed or the equipment, um, you, 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 you haven't got um, sufficient um, facilities to do that. Yes, uh, we will have to do the procurement first. Uh, next, uh, Elizabeth Quart. Thank you, Chairman. Right now, I think that Hong Kong is already on the brink of uh, collapse. That's the reason why we have received uh, so many complaints. We don't have enough manpower for testing and also facilities and so on and so forth. Uh, I think it's, alre it's already a very serious problem. On top of that, uh, 
you have already uh, adopted this uh, new approach of uh, stay home safe. I don't think that will work in Hong Kong. In Japan, they have already proven to you that uh, for those uh, who stay home for treatment, in fact, uh, that would only lead to an increase or surge in the number of uh, cases. Hong Kong is uh, even smaller and uh, the living space is smaller. Then how can that work? And um, well, mainland experts uh, have also come over and they've already helped us uh, with uh, um, installing or building the makeshift uh, hospitals. Uh, so you should ask uh, the mainland uh, to give us uh, comprehensive support, including both manpower and facilities. You should also build that uh, well, a mobile hospital as soon as possible. You should not be asking people to stay home for treatment. And uh, while we still don't have those facilities in place, uh, you should uh, try to make use of hotels and other vacant government premises so that uh, they can be turned into um, mobile or makeshift hospitals so that uh, for those uh, with uh, mild symptoms or those uh, who are asymptomatic, they can be isolated in those facilities instead of staying home to infect their family members. All right, for those uh, who have difficulties, they can also contact you. But then we have received so many complaints uh, who said that they had not been able to contact you and uh, nobody was answering the calls. So this is not working. And also on contact tracing, I've said that uh, many times, adopting your current approach uh, by doing this uh, very primitively and manually, you will not be able to cope. And therefore, however busy you might be, I understand that uh, you are very busy and your hands are tied, but then you will have to spare the manpower so that you will have to talk to the IT sector so that uh, we can work with you. And then we can also talk to the GCICO so that we can come up with a tracking or tracing system so that you will be able to make use of IT to do the tracing work or else you will not be able to cope. And Bureau Director, you've also said that uh, the testing centers will be using IT as well. Well, what I'd like to tell you is that you have not been able to do so, for example, in Penny Bay. You still haven't got the time to discuss uh, how you can make use of the uh, state-of-the-art technology. If you do not solve that bottleneck, then we will continue to face uh, this problem. Okay, it's about um, deploying vacant sites and so on. I think uh, some members have asked that already. So Bureau Director, can you tell us again? And also using IT to deal with the contact tracing issue. So who would like to answer this question? Bureau Director. Thank you, Chairman. Number one, I'd like to clarify this because uh, thanks to um, Ms. Kwok's uh, question. All right, we have come up with this uh, stay home safe. Uh, those are for the close uh, contacts and also for the, uh, for the, second, uh, for the second tier of uh, close contacts. And um, as the director already explained, uh, I don't need to go any further. And then for those uh, who have been uh, tested uh, positive, we have um, vacated uh, phase one and phase two of Penny's Bay. And uh, we are also liaising with some hotels so that for those uh, who have been tested positive, and yet if they are asymptomatic and if they are young, and the, if the risk are low, then they can also go to these uh, community isolation facilities. So um, some are waiting um, for their turn. So it's not that uh, we have activated uh, the situation whereby for those uh, who have been confirmed uh, um, infected, uh, um, we have asked them to stay home. That's not true. And also for Penny's Bay, as I said, uh, that will be handed over to the HA to make it um, a community isolation facility. And then for some quarantine hotels, um, initially, they would be used uh, for close contacts to get isolated. And right now, we are gradually talking to them, and we are asking them to turn them into community isolation facilities. For example, for the um, the um, Asian World Expo, well, uh, it's now used uh, as one of our facilities, and uh, the capacity will further increase. Well, we don't have enough time, uh, as the next item is also on this. And if you're not able to answer all the questions, you can also do so in writing. So please be precise and concise, and please refrain from expressing your personal views. Third, Regina Yip, Chen Yong, and Luan Man Kuang. Regina Yip. Thank you, Chairman. I'll not be long-winded. Well, yesterday at uh, the CA panel, the uh, Privacy Commissioner already made it quite clear that it's under our privacy, personal data uh, privacy ordinance. Uh, there is no uh, express provision banning the collection of personal data. 
so long as they can um, comply with certain uh, personal data uh, privacy protection um, criteria, it's okay. And therefore, um, it's all it's okay for our Leave Home Safe app uh, to have this uh, tracing uh, capability, and uh, that would also. Um, make it no longer necessary for us uh, to use our disciplinary services to do the tracing work because uh, right now you will have to do a lot of testing um, and uh, you will have to find out uh, who has been to where and then after a couple of days and uh, you will have to make sure that uh, all those who have been there during the past uh, fortnight will be tested and you will also have to test uh, the sewage um, water or sewage um, samples before you can find out if there are infections. So, uh, well, for the uh, Leave Home Safe um, app, uh, you have uh, updated it uh, uh, three times, and uh, now you're requiring people to upload their vaccination record onto that app. So, why don't you also include this uh, tracing capacity in the app so that uh, you can also give a token to the elders that would also speed up your tracing uh, capability? So, why don't you do that, Bureau Director? Thank you, uh, Mrs. Yip, for your question. Well, under our current strategy, any functions or technology that can help with the contact tracing, in particular, Omicron, uh, is spreading so fast. And therefore, from the public health perspective, we welcome that suggestion. We also hope that uh, we can get um, the GCICO's uh, help to deal with it. And of course, all along, they've been um, enhancing the capacity of or capability of uh, the Leave Home Safe app. As you know, we have this uh, vaccination pass. And it's uh, like um, using your real identity when you register with the uh, premises. Because with this uh, vaccination pass, we have already got certain personal data uploaded. Uh, and that would also he help with uh, contact tracing. But then uh, for any measures that can help with the contract contact tracing procedures uh, or process, uh, we will welcome that. And internally, we will continue to discuss that. Thank you. I'm not saying that you are not doing that, sir. It's, not, it's just that uh, you have not been working fast enough. Bureau Director, yes, I will do it as uh, quickly as possible. It's been two years since the introduction of the app. Uh, you've, been to you've been too slow. Next, Chen Yong. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Bureau Director, Under Secretary, and also the Permanent Secretary. I understand that uh, you've been working very hard. Well, we understand that we will have to do the testing and isolation quick enough. And uh, yesterday, the central authorities have already made it clear that uh, so long as Hong Kong makes the request, uh, they'll, be all, they'll be all more than happy to help. So, Bureau Director, what kind of um, Request how will you be making to the state authorities so that uh, they can give priority to us? And of course, our life is the most important thing. And therefore, you will have to stabilize the situation. You will have to get the mainland experts to help. And you will have to set up the laboratory and also the uh, uh, makeshift hospitals and so on. And also the use of uh, Chinese medicine. Uh, uh, the best thing is to introduce a proprietary Chinese medicine into Hong Kong. So what kind of requests have you made with the central authorities so that they can help? Bureau Director, thank you, Chairman. Indeed, uh, over the weekend, we're going to have um, another exchange session. And of course, uh, the State Council and also the Health Commission and, um, uh, and so on have been maintaining um, continuous uh, liaison with us. And uh, of course, uh, this is a critical time. And of course, we would like to increase our capacity in terms of um, our measures, uh, facilities, uh, and manpower. That's one of the directions. And secondly, of course, we will also be exploring the um, advice uh, or seeking the advice uh, from the mainland experts uh, so that there would be more exchanges with us because we'd like to um, learn from their experience on the mainland. In fact, last year, in November, as Mr. Chen, you might recall, well, mainland experts um, from the Health Commission also came to Hong Kong to inspect our facilities. And they'd also taken a look at our uh, measures, and uh, they confirm 
our work and they've also given us uh, professional advice and there was also a lot of uh, feedback from them. And of course, uh, with this fifth wave, uh, the challenge is big because um, undeniably, Omicron spreads fast. Uh, well, during the past uh, uh, waves, uh, we've been able to cope. But now, given the current wave, uh, we have to work even faster. I think you will have to focus on two issues. I think the two questions is, uh, have you talked to the experts? So have you been talking to the state as to the priority that you might be uh, making in terms of getting their help? And also, what about Chinese medicine? You have not been able to answer the two questions. Chairman, about seeking help from central government, this is what the Chief Secretary for Administration uh, is following up on, and he, he is leading a team. Right, what about the details? Do you uh, give a list of priorities uh, to the CS4A uh, on what help should be provided? Because we have been pressing you on these issues, and you've been dodging our question. This is the third. Um, this is the third member asking you the same question. Don't waste our time. Well, no, no supplement. I'm sorry, no supplement. She hasn't answered your question, Secretary. What about uh, TCM Chinese medicine? The hospital authority provides Chinese medicine rehabilitation and treatment services. We have Chinese Western medicine uh, integrated uh, medicine service, but at the moment our priority is on fighting the ep epidemic. And I think that uh, our priority should be given to uh, testing and fighting the epidemic first. Next, Mr. Lauman Guang. Thank you, Chairman. Now, uh, my question is on um, fighting the epidemic and that we should be scientific. Now, on rapid antigen test, if the test result is positive, may I know the percentage of uh, positive RAT results actually becoming po confirmed cases or are they false positives? Because earlier I received complaints about the chaos regarding RAT results. Um, some people were asked to wait at home and get or approach a private doctor to get tested again. It seems that there is a confusion among the public. In relation to the RAT result, if a citizen test positive. Can you give them clear information on the next step? Because I'm concerned that if their case is only handled after a confirmatory test is carried out by the government, then it will be too late and there will be a transmission in the community. Now, uh, you also suggest uh, setting up a remote uh, consultation uh, net, uh, online doctors now can we apply the initiative to uh, fighting the epidemic because at the moment at uh, the telephone co um, hotline doesn't come through and uh, there is only a QR code available whether there is any online mechanism for a lot to allow them to get uh, registered or do we have online doctors instructing uh, possible patients how to handle their symptoms at home Secretary, Chairman, I will invite the hospital authority and the Department of Health to give you some uh, instructions or some details. But I want to emphasize that the RAT is in no way replacing PCR tests. So even if you test positive with RAT kit, you need to do a confirmatory PCR test. I would defer the question to uh, HA because I understand after a case has been confirmed, there are guidelines for the uh, person in question to follow. They should stay home. HA, about the rapid antigen test, Mr. Long asked about false positive or false negative result. In short, it depends on whether the test has been carried out properly and if 
it is done properly, the chances of getting a false positive isn't high. On the whole, we disseminate information by, for example, the press car press briefing at 4.30. We tell members of the public what they should do, uh, say, in the event of getting an RAT positive result. We already explained the situation already. We thank Mr. Leung for his comments, and we will consider ways to adopt wider use of IT to help uh, people who are still waiting to be hospitalized. Director, thank you, Chairman. If you have an RAT positive result, like Dr. Cole said, we have different information channels letting the public know how they should deal with the situation. For example, once you test positive, are you automatically um, becoming a preliminary positive case. Now we need to collect data further as this is the first time we try out uh, RAT in Hong Kong. Now if the percentage of a final confirmation is low or the false rate of positive is low, um, we may consider uh, allowing RAT result to be regarded as preliminary positive. I won't allow any more members to join the line. We are behind schedule. I will read out the names of members who will be speaking. Wong Kwok, Chen Hao Yan, Chen Han Pan, Chen Kin Po, Leung He, Duncan Chiu, Alice Mack, Holden Chow, Yu Pak Lang, Lam Chi Yun, Carmen Can, Lam Shen Chiu. That's it, right? Uh, observe the time limit, please. Next, Mr. Wong Kwok. Thank you, Chairman. I think the biggest problem in Hong Kong is to boost the confidence of the public in fighting the epidemic. Now, the government always talks about effective measures in con containing the epidemic, but now we see major outbreaks. Perhaps. After discussing with mainland experts, we can come up with a clear set of goals on achieving zero infection. We should not talk about uh, coexisting with the virus or staying home to fight the epidemic. So the government should have a clear strategy of achieving zero infection to salvage public confidence. The other point is how we can deploy community resources. Apart from seeking help from central government, for example, if the RAT test result is positive, um, one should not take a taxi to a hospital. This also sparks a lot of concern in the in the trade. For example, the government should arrange for a designated fleet to take people to hospital. I think that the government should consider if um, manpower level permits how we can deploy community resources. Secretary, thank you, Mr. Wong. First, the government has always abided by the goal of achieving zero infection. We have remained steadfast in our position and we have not adjusted our strategy. We're not going to just live with the virus. That's for sure. As for achieving dynamic zero infection, starting from May this uh, last year towards uh, the end of the year, we have been able to achieve zero infection for uh, seven months. That proved the effectiveness of our strategies. As for Omicron, the feature of this mutant variant is that it has rapid uh, transmission capability. Despite the existing effective strategies, we, we need to step up further to detect the cases uh, much earlier, which is a challenge. And I agree with the member that, of course, we will seek the central people's government support and also consider under the existing containment strategy, 
what we should improve on. And the mainland experts in uh, visited us in November and uh, advised us on uh, areas of improvement. And definitely, we will be discussing these matters in the second meeting. I thank Mr. Wong for his comments on how we should handle cases whom uh, who have visited the A and A unit before the confirmatory test result is available. What should we do about them? Whether they should go home, and like Dr. Ko said, if it is an RAT. And if the result is preliminary positive, the HA earlier already advised members of the public not to visit A and E units. Instead, you should ask a friend or a family member to get a deep throat sample um, specimen bottle to collect a specimen. And for me, uh, for um, Confirmed cases, they should be sent to community isolation facilities as soon as possible. Next, Deputy Chair. Thank you, Chairman. Paragraph 1 and 36 of the paper refer to the point of emerging from the epidemic and that we are highly efficient, we're professional, and we're highly adaptable. First of all, I'd like to thank um, our staff uh, at the front line and the, and the public health care system still we are uh, lagging behind now we have 1300 confirmed cases today may i know from the government have what you think is going wrong you seem to have answered uh, our questions but you don't know what is going wrong about early testing isolation and treatment of course you should do it as early as possible, but you're not doing it early enough. So first on treatment, just now Secretary mentioned that stay home safe is for close contacts, but many confirmed cases are actually waiting at home as well. So my first question is in relation to your meeting on Sunday or on Saturday, can we have a uh, Huashenshan hospital? In Wuhan, can you build a mobile hospital in just 10 days? The hospital in Wuhan spanned 34,000 square meters. Do we have such space in Hong Kong for a mobile hospital of the scale? The Penny's Bay Quarantine Center is now a center for receiving confirmed cases. What about hotels nearby? The airport hotel has 1,170 rooms. There is also another resort hotel in the amusement park nearby. Can we turn them into a facility for patient reception? Now about the early testing, well, just visit the community. One needs to queue up for three to four hours. You have uh, the uh, our country's uh, guidelines on uh, mixing samples in the testing effort. Can we adopt this strategy to enhance the testing capacity? Thank you for your questions. First, on quarantine and isolation facilities, there is a need to increase our capacity. Ms. Chen made a valid point apart from Penny's Bay, we are now discussing with hotels. At the moment, we have designated quarantine hotels for close contacts, and we may need to turn them into isolation facilities. That is for the low risk asymptomatic confirmed cases uh, to uh, stay there. As for the meeting with the central authorities on Saturday, what requests will we be making and what kind of support will we need? Of course, we need to discuss with the mainland experts and see um, what support is most suitable for Hong Kong. First of all, we need to uh, gauge our capacities, including testing capacities and the availability of facilities. These will be the issues we discuss at the meeting. 
As for resources, like the uh, Under Secretary said, at the moment, despite our effort, we need to continue to increase our capacity, and that includes upgrading hardware and providing more testing centers to ease the pressure. And that is why we are now talking to the uh, service providers, be it the use of uh, mixed testing uh, like Ms. Chen said in fact we have now uh, upgraded the technology and we'll continue to work in this direction and we'll also cons uh, discuss with the service providers on the testing methodology and the requirements next three members are Chen Fen, Chen Kin Po Long Hei, Chen Hang Pen thank you chairman first of all I'd like to thank the frontline officers because uh, they have been having a very hard time during the past uh, week or so. Well, what I'd like to say is, uh, all right, uh, you'd like to encourage uh, early vaccination, early testing, and so on and so forth. Uh, it remains a slogan so far. All right, for uh, rapid testing, well, um, for, the, um, for those uh, who have been uh, a preliminary positive, uh, you are also encouraging the family members uh, to get the um, sample kits so that uh, they can um, use it uh, and then take it to the authorities for further confirmative tests. Bureau Director, well, for the test kits, uh, well, there are distribution centers. So they can go to the post office or other facilities to get that. Well, Bureau Director, let me tell you this. Every day at the distribution uh, center, so if you go there a couple of times later, then um, they are gone. So you're also asking people to take the jab. But then um, are there enough jabs for them to take? Well, I've been visiting some clinics, uh, and they said that, uh, well, they are running out of uh, stock already because uh, the, 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 the delivery has been late. And this morning, you've also set up some um, ad hoc facilities uh, to help the elders um, to take the jab. All right, uh, they lined up as early as 8.30, and some 500 people were there. And then what about uh, the, others, uh, several, the other several hundred who are also waiting? And also, what about the number of uh, jabs? Uh, have you got enough stock? Uh, how come all the um, outpatient clinics uh, in the community have run out of stock? I think you've already asked that question. Please do not repeat the question that you have asked, uh, Bureau Director. In fact, uh, for the supply of jabs uh, is uh, stable and is uh, enough. And uh, after listening to Mr. Chen, apparently, I think it's about the logistics. I understand that uh, the Civil Service Bureau has been monitoring the situation closely. And as you can see, for the vaccination centers, um, instead of just uh, having 10, we have now got 15. So there is there has been uh, an addition of five. And we are also increasing the number of testing centers. And for private um, medical practitioners, as Dr. Choi just said, uh, given the huge demand right now, private doctors might have exhausted uh, their jabs. And the most important thing is to inform the D of H, and then we will try to deliver the uh, jabs to them as quickly as possible, so long as they can make the request. Uh, we will try our best uh, to deliver the jabs to them as soon as possible. So I think uh, mostly this is um, a logistics issue. OK, all they need to do is to raise their hands. But then according to some clinics, they have done so well in advance. Uh, still, they haven't got the jabs. So is it just um, a logistics problem? And if the DFH is not able to do it, what about other departments? Can they help? So. I think the issue is the government has not been doing things in a coordinated manner. And uh, now you're leaving everything to the D of H. And uh, is it that uh, without the D of H, uh, other departments are not able to do anything at all? Bureau Director, no, that's not true. In fact, uh, the entire government has been working together. All the departments are working closely together. So different departments have been helping out, uh, for example, uh, Home Affairs, and even the Environment Bureau. So all the bureaus and departments have been working together as to the D of H uh, delivery service. The overall situation uh, can also be further explained uh, by the director. I'm sure uh, he will be more than happy to increase the manpower to do this. Yes, uh, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chen. 
in terms of the of the delivering of the jabs, uh, in fact, uh, that should be um, done in a couple of days. Uh, so we've been talking about over eight million jabs. I think the most important thing is the uh, pandemic is uh, developing so rapidly that uh, the utilization rate. Uh, of individual clinics has been so high that we are not able to cope. Well, thank you, Director. You don't need to repeat what has been said already. Next, uh, Chen Kin Po. Thank you, Chairman. Well, this morning, many members have already reflected uh, the sentiments of the community, and I'm sure the administration will do something about it. This is a very hard time. Please do uh, understand the situation. and. Uh, this is going to be very painful. Well, I'd like to just uh, reflect this uh, on behalf of some citizens. Well, if um, there's going to be universal testing, then you will have to make sure that uh, those are uh, uh, suspected uh, to have been infected uh, should be separated uh, from those who are healthy. And also, in a policy address, uh, it's supposed to be a briefing. And in your paper, you said that you will continue to improve uh, the public health care sector. I think many people have been asking this question. That is um, about the HA. Well, it's not just uh, the feeling of uh, many people. In fact, uh, many from the sector also said that uh, the HA would need to have um, um, a comprehensive review. And if there is no comprehensive review of the HA, then um, there will be uh, uh, problems of working long hours and so on. I understand that this is very complicated, but then it's time for you to um, be resolute and uh, review it. Uh, yes, a lot of our hospitals are being redeveloped, uh, and those would be very time consuming. But then I think uh, you will have to find time to do it uh, sometime. Um, uh, uh, anyway, yes, Bureau Director. Yes, during the past uh, two years, we've been working very hard to fight the pandemic, but then um, we will spare no efforts uh, in improving our healthcare policies and facilities and also the services that we provide. And uh, with regard to the HA, in terms of uh, resources, um, we do have the two 10 year hospital development plans. But then, in terms of overall manpower, it's also a big challenge. That's why, thanks to the support of this council, well, we have managed to enact. Uh, or pass the amendment legislation so that we can also introduce uh, non-locally trained doctors to help make up for the shortfall. And uh, I'll defer to Dr. Choi, uh, who will tell us more about uh, the um, triage services and so on. So Dr. Ko, um, he's from the HA. Yes, thank you. Um, I'll brief. I'll be brief uh, in answering Mr. Chen's question. In fact. Um, we have already conducted a very comprehensive uh, review during the last term of uh, government, and uh, we have been implementing the recommendations of the report. And during the past uh, two years, uh, internally, we have also conducted um, uh, um, a review by setting up a, a task force uh, on sustainable development. So that's all I can report so far. Next, uh, Mr. Lang Hei. Um, am I coming through? Yes. Thank you, Chairman, Bureau Director. I'd like to talk about uh, the sustainable improvement of the uh, public health care sector, in particular dental health um, and um, other services. Well, right now, for public uh, dental clinics, um, um, only civil servants are able to enjoy comprehensive care. So will you be introducing comprehensive dental services to the community? Because if you've been to the community, you can see that uh, many elders uh, are having problematic teeth, and yet uh, they have not been able to get proper treatment because uh, there are no such services available in the public health care sector. So you will have to introduce such services so that uh, our people and our elders in particular can be helped. Bureau Director, yes, uh, that point is taken. We understand the views of Mr. Leung because, on the one hand, uh, for dentists, uh, manpower is not very adequate. And also, dentists are mostly working in the private sector. And therefore, the current policy is that uh, we would focus on uh, where it's most needed. And uh, therefore, whether it's uh, the CCF, uh, or our public um, or government dental clinic, um, we would serve uh, the elders and also another group that would um, require more attention is the uh, is those uh, who are mentally incapacitated 
and also uh, for young kids because prevention is always better than cure and therefore if we are able to um, make sure that students and young kids are able to protect their dental health uh, then when they grow up um, um, there is uh, less chance uh, that they would uh, have problems with regard to their dental health and therefore we will increase the number of dentists and secondly for the um, elderly health uh, coupons uh, elders can also use them to uh, get private dental services and third um, well every time when I uh, talk to the uh, outreaching teams uh, well they've been very positive in providing dental services in the community and uh, they're also offering that up at a relatively low price so that's been that's what we've been doing thank you another question is bureau director will you be introducing comprehensive dental services at public hospitals you talk about uh, the difficulties well during this term of government i understand that there are only just uh, a few months to go but then um will you consider introducing that within this term well to have uh, a comprehensive uh, public dental service we need to have uh, sufficient manpower and uh, facilities at this stage uh, we simply don't have those okay next three Yao Ted Ken Alice Mack and Holden Chow yes um Thank you, Chairman. I have to declare interest. I'm a member of um, the HA. I have three quick questions. Uh, just now, the Bureau Director said that uh, we've been adopting a very scientific approach uh, in dealing with this pandemic. But then just now, about the vaccination pass, uh, it's like uh, using your real identity to uh, get the pass. It's not scientific because uh, you have not done any double verification at all, and therefore it's not really that uh, the person will have to use his real identity in using this vaccination pass. I've been making suggestions uh, to different departments uh, that they have to make sure that uh, the people will have to use their real identity when they use the vaccination pass. So my question for you now is that uh, with this um, real identity system and also the tracking um, capability, can that can both be done? And uh, just now, Elizabeth Quartz's question has not been answered. And then our, our command center at Penny's Bay, they are still using uh, or doing things uh, manually. I think this is really um, quite amazing because you're lagging behind. So will you be uh, learning from the experience of the mainland? And if you'd like to get any advice, uh, we do have experts uh, who have um, very good experience. Uh, we can give you the support. And thirdly, yesterday, um, Gabriel Leung and um, other experts uh, have made some projections according to the current situation or well, if we follow the existing approach then some 900 people will die by mid-June all right uh, you're also an expert in this regard do you agree with um, Gabriel Leung's uh, forecast or projection Bureau Director before you answer the question I'd like to say that uh, with regard to the real identity approach mrs regina it also asked the same question you did not answer because right now well the privacy commissioner already said that many things uh, can be done to help you do the tracking so i'm asking you the second time so as the privacy commissioner has already given you advice uh, on the um, identification issue and you can always uh, include this uh, tracking ability in the mobile apps. Uh, can, will you be doing that? Uh, well, contact tracing is a very important measure. And therefore, anything that can help, including the use of IT and whatever, if that can help with contact tracing to make it faster and more accurate, uh, then from the public health perspective, uh, that will be most welcome. And uh, we would also like to get some IT support so that we can do it uh, even more efficient and uh, better. Okay, so for the vaccination pass, uh, you think you have already been able to uh, uh, trace the identity of the person and therefore it's already good enough? No. 
it does is not uh, equivalent to having this um, tracing capability. But then, as uh, Mr. Sid, the bureau director, already said, if you've been to a certain premises and if um, there has been a confirmed case, and if we like to retrieve the information, that would make it easier because we would know exactly who had been there at that particular time, and that would expedite the process. But then, as you might recall, well, for the health code, well, the um, GCICO has been dealing with that uh, because uh, they were making preparation for the um, reopening of the uh, border with uh, China, and therefore that was already done. Well, they don't have now, about what Mr. Chu just now said, together with the Innovation Technology Bureau, we very much hope to build a more expeditious and convenient uh, and an effective uh, tracing uh, mechanism. And I think the INT sector has been liaising closely with the IT Bureau, and we welcome suggestions. Finally, Dr. Gabriel Leung of Hong Kong University is also a government expert. Uh, we have liaison with him, and at this stage, he's made some suggestions or projections, analysis, and we'll keep in view these matters. I'd like to tell uh, colleagues that uh, we're supposed to wrap up this item at 12. But 16 members have asked questions. Apart from Mr. Chen Kin Po and Mr. Leung Hei, who asked, uh, uh, who speak in the subject, that is the policy initiatives, albeit they also ask questions on vaccines. And we're actually combining this item with the next items. We have six or seven members waiting to speak. I'll allow them to speak and then we can still have 30 minutes to focus on the next item which is about uh, fighting the epidemic. Ms. Ellis Mack, I have a question on the policy address. It's still related to the epidemic. Chairman, we understand better the work of the Department of Health in the current epidemic. And we wonder whether they are able to perform as well in the current epidemic. Uh, the chief executive has proposed uh, reorganizing the government structure and that the uh, Food and Health Bureau will be split and Health Bureau will be set up so that we can focus on the uh, health uh, portfolio. My question for the government is uh, how we are going to expand the terms of reference of the Department of Health after the epidemic because we have identified many issues in the current ep epidemic, uh, not no digitalization, insufficient manpower. So we're talking about enhancing the function of the Department of Health and increasing manpower. Second, we don't have sufficient hospital beds. I just received a complaint. It actually is a call for assistance. Nobody dares to complain. Now, the case was confirmed on the 4th, and the patient waited for seven days and not yet hospitalized. The family member, however, had been um, sent and discharged from a quarantine center for the hospital authority. Is it that even with the commissioning of the isolation facility in Penny's Bay, Penny's Bay Isolation Center, there is still uh, insufficient supply, and we do need the central government's help to build a hospital to help us. About the functions of the Department of Health, this question will first be answered, and then I'll defer to the XA to answer other questions put by Ms. Mack. Like uh, the paper suggests, we need to enhance the Department of Health function in mapping out healthcare strategies and also expedite the use of INT applications and uh, developing life and health technology. Now, the Department of Health provides a wide range of services, but these services have been suspended so that they can focus on fighting the epidemic. Um, for the uh, blueprint, blueprint for the uh, development of primary health care services in Hong Kong, under this blueprint, 
We will continue to enhance the department's function uh, on uh, matters such as pub public health. Director. Thank you, Chairman Ms. Mack. Pursuant to this epidemic, we do find a number of areas we should focus on. For example, we should improve um, the uh, legislation because in the current epidemic, uh, new pieces of legislation have been set up. The other point is about uh, the attrition rate of uh, healthcare professionals. At the moment, we have a high attrition rate. So the next point of focus is manpower training, retention, so that we can continue to enhance our public health functions. Dr. Ko, thank you, Chairman, Ms. Mack. Indeed, we do not have sufficient facilities for patients, especially confirmed cases. As you know, we have isolation beds, Hong Kong North Lantau Hospital and the Asia World Expo, but altogether we have just 3,000 beds. However, we have a daily, uh, we have every day 16, uh, over 1,000 cases. And we are experiencing difficulties, and we are converting the Penny Bay uh, facility to receive m patients without symptoms or with mild symptoms, so that they can be isolated at the center. We also need to reserve hospital beds for needy elderly patients or those with clinical needs. And we are sparing no efforts in working out uh, more facilities with the government so that we can isolate more patients. Next, Mr. Holden Chow. Thank you, Chairman. Am I coming through? Yes. Thank you. Chairman, uh, Secretary. I'd like to thank you for all the contribution you've made. I know your job is difficult, and I'd like to thank um, frontline healthcare staff for their continuous effort. I have a number of suggestions. Other members already asked about the latest anti-epidemic situation. I'll just speak directly. First, insufficient testing capacity. Now, if we seek help from the central people's government, we should be asking for the supporting facilities such as the laboratory. If we have a mobile laboratory facility, we will be able to expand the testing capacity and with sufficient manpower, we should be able to cope with uh, large scale um, testing so that uh, we would no longer see long queues. That is, we have central government support. After testing, of course, the next step is to uh, treat confirmed patients. We all have received many cases uh, requiring assistance. At the moment, they're helpless. They stay home waiting to be sent to hospital or to uh, Penny's Bay. Of course, if we don't have enough facilities, so we should set up a mobile cabin hospital and we should uh, use our holiday homes. But there is another bottleneck, logistic services. Will the government assess whether we have sufficient logistic services? Even if you have facilities to isolate them, you need transport to take them there. So please consider that. The other point is that if a confirmed case is forced to wait at home, they may be in a panic. So will the government consider using Chinese medicine? Because mainland Chinese medicine doctors have discovered uh, or proposed 
certain prescriptions of Chinese medicine that could help alleviate the symptoms. Will the government provide information relating to Chinese medicine to help these patients who are still waiting? Of course, the best option is to take them away as quickly as possible. But in this event, uh, will you provide more information to um, allay their concern? And the other point is about the long queues outside testing centers. I know the department is distributing the specimen bottles. In the latest round of testing, you allow um, people to submit uh, deep throat saliva specimen uh, for testing instead. Now, before we are able to build a Kevin Mobile Hospital or a mobile lab, can you distribute more specimen bottles? Thank you. 25 seconds, Secretary. Just pick one question and answer him. She sp uh, he spent three minutes, 35 seconds. You can reply uh, to other his other questions in writing. On transport, the chief executive held a meeting in person with the Department of Health and the Fire Services Department with a view to speeding up the transport of confirmed cases who are at the moment waiting at home so that they can be taken to the community isolation facility. The fire services department has been very helpful as far as uh, the dispatch of ambulances. We will uh, continue to expedite uh, our work in this regard with the FD, the uh, FSD. We have uh, four more members who would like to speak. Mr. Yo Park Long. Thank you, Chairman, Secretary. The current situation is such that it seems that we are uh, in wartime. Now, Secretary, my question for you is when do you think the uh, epidemic will be uh, put under control? If you don't have I any idea, you should uh, spe speed up your effort in uh, seeking help from the central authorities. Another question on vaccination. There is an, a surge in demand for vaccination. People would like to get the third jab. You have 15 centers, three for Sinovac. And in new territories, there is only one in Sha Tin. You have one in Hong Kong, one in Kowloon, and the one other in NT. Can you have another vaccination center in the Northwest NT? Can we resume all 20 centers as we had before? Next, will you consider using idle coaches or hotels? to provide support and uh, lift the pressure out of the system. And we have long queues outside testing centers. People are in a predicament. However, even after testing, one has to wait for more than 10 hours before the result is ready. Will you consider using the uh, mainland testing model that is the logic is you have um, a group of 10 with the names registered first and then you can mix all the specimen and if there is no neg no positive result you can move on to the next team or in if there is positive result have further screening three points we have adequate supply of sinovac vaccine and as explained just now the department of health will supply vaccines to private doctors as quickly as possible. We only have three vaccination centers for Sinovac because we have over 1,000 private doctors across the territory providing um, vac uh, Sinovac jabs. We understand the recent increase in demand and the Department of Health will work out the logistics arrangements as quickly as possible. I would appeal to private doctors to inform the Department of Health as quickly as possible the number of uh, vaccine jabs they need. The other point is about taking confirmed cases or isolate uh, pac patients to uh, facilities for isolation. I thank the member for uh, the suggestion of increasing transport. The FSD has been providing great support. Uh, 
method about testing result. Our testing agencies are doing the level best to increase the service capacity. In the past few days, we conducted tests for over 200 million, uh, 200,000 specimens. I appeal to your understanding. And once there is a confirmed case, we will inform him as soon as possible. Some members also suggested that uh, well, we should also um, make better use of the bottles of all the deep throat samples. But then uh, one of the uh, challenging things about this is about the testing technology, because when we do the testing in the uh, laboratory, the time that would be needed uh, for that would be longer. And therefore, we have to strike a balance. On the one hand, we'd like to get the result as soon as possible. And on the other, we also have to make sure that we can also ease the situation as far as possible. Next. Yes, uh, I'd like to ask a question about the uh, policy address. You talk about collaboration. In fact, uh, for public hospitals, uh, the beds are filled up uh, uh, in no time. One of the reasons why is that uh, they have not been discharged uh, uh, quickly enough. And therefore, well, for um, new housing estates, a sufficient space uh, would be set aside uh, for taking care of um, elders, and there'll be daycare centers. And uh, there would also be community. Uh, hospitals, uh, for example, other than doctors, uh, we will have uh, care professionals, including uh, pharmacists and so on. And uh, there are also policies to help the HA so that uh, for patients uh, whose uh, condition has stabilized uh, can also be uh, uh, sent to those uh, centers. Uh, and uh, elders would also be able to see the doctors uh, in a community. And also, in the wake of the pandemic, uh, given the tight manpower situation, well, for um, chronic diseases, uh, patients, if their condition is stabilized, uh, then can they also be deployed to such a center so that uh, the hospitals can be used uh, for treating the um, um, pandemic patients? Uh, and also, what is uh, related uh, to this pandemic is about uh, the testing. Well, in many cases, uh, they are, their symptoms are very mild. So can you have uh, special facilities in a community for the registration of these uh, patients so that they can do the PCR test there? And they can also wait there for um, being sent to the isolation uh, facilities or quarantine facilities. Bureau Director. Yes, about uh, community and um, healthcare or HA collaboration. I think uh, there are several things to bear in mind. So first, uh, We'll be stepping up our effort uh, so that we will be stepping up our primary health care and uh, with our district based uh, uh, center or district health centers. Uh, many of them are located in public uh, housing estates and therefore they are very close to the community. And of course, uh, with better um, uh, medical or health care and uh, social service uh, collaboration, that's also one of the um, initiatives, and therefore we will continue to work with uh, the relevant uh, uh, stakeholders, uh, certainly about uh, healthcare professionals. Right now, for our primary um, healthcare services um, model, so the HA will be the um, hub, but then at the community level, uh, district based uh, healthcare professionals and also district health centers will be working together. And one of the objectives is to help the HA so that for patients, um, whether they are in their rehabilitation phase or they are in their self-care stage, uh, they can also go back to the community for further treatment and uh, rehabilitation. And they can also do more uh, self-care there. So that's the direction. That's about uh, the medical social collaboration. With regard to further testing, yes, uh, Mr. Lam, you are right. Because after doing the RAT test, um, if the person is asymptomatic, then we do encourage uh, these uh, people to stay home before they can undergo the PCR confirmative test so that we can see if um, they are indeed infected. And of course, uh, for some of these uh, RAT test agencies, uh, they've also got some uh, after-sale services. They can provide further testing for these uh, um, presumptive cases. So we are dealing with that. 
and um, there are different demands. And we are in the process of negotiating with them to see how we can step up the work. But then the most important thing is to um, make sure that uh, those who are not in urgent need will not go to the AED or A and E department because we'd like to uh, reserve those uh, places uh, for those are uh, in need. Next, uh, well, in the paper, para 36, uh, the uh, administration made it clear that uh, we do have ambitious plans to deliver. Our top priorities right now remains clear. That is, we have to do our best to control the epidemic. And uh, is now in a better state, and uh, special times would require special initiatives. We've been uh, feeling the pulse of the community, and uh, we are taking things very urgently. Still, we have to rely on the, administrati on the administration to take the matter forward. Uh, we have been asking these uh, questions time and again. And uh, for the vaccination pass, uh, we have heard that uh, it does not have um, this uh, tracing capability. And we have heard uh, the IT Bureau had said that uh, this is not an IT issue because earlier on, we have already um, made it clear that uh, the health code would be able to trace the whereabouts of the uh, person and what you have been what you've been able to do is to make sure that our premises can use the vaccination pass. And if you uh, purchase uh, takeouts or takeaways, then people will not be recorded. And they don't have to use the vaccination pass. And therefore, technology-wise, it's not a problem. And the bureau director already made it clear that it's not a problem. So it's about um, your determination. You will have to uh, do it because earlier on, when we amended the, the telecommunications ordinance, uh, well, even for the um, um, for the unnamed cards, uh, they will also have to register the true identity of the user. And therefore, technology-wise, it's not a problem for you to trace the people. It's not an issue of uh, privacy. And now you're leaving it to the premises. You're telling them that if you'd like to open for business, you will have to do something about it. But then it's now for the premises to keep the records of the uh, users. I think it's not uh, safe enough because uh, is it that uh, you can make sure that uh, it's encrypted to such an extent that nobody would be able to hack into the system? And earlier on, I also read from the newspapers, uh, apparently for those uh, who are age uh, 5 to 11, the vaccination rate is very low. I understand that uh, the parents are very worried. But then according to the latest survey, some 80% of the 10,000 odd respondents express uh, worries. So if you're not against um, having kids uh, age 5 to 11 to take the jab, uh, then you will have to do something in order to ensure that uh, such uh, concerns can be allayed. Well, I think the first question has been answered several times, and the second question is a new one. So, Bureau Director, can you take them? Thank you. With the uh, very little time left, uh, I'll try my best to answer the second question. All right, Ms. Khan, you talk about uh, our Leave Home Safe app and also under their existing uh, tracing capability. You're asking that uh, the administration should uh, make further improvements uh, to the functions of the app. That is, we should make use of IT to increase our contract, contact tracing capability. Yes, uh, that will indeed be something that we are working on. We'd like to improve the overall contact tracing capability. On vaccination. In particular, when it comes to young kids, uh, thanks to your suggestion that uh, we should do more explanation to the community. In fact, uh, our experts, including our vaccination expert, uh, the Joint Scientific Committee, has been saying that uh, well, both uh, jabs uh, are effective and, and uh, their quality is guaranteed. And in terms of lowering the vaccination age, that has been confirmed to be effective. And therefore, whether it's about our, our explanation to the community or about the supply of uh, vaccination services, we will continue to work hard to improve that. Because right now, schools uh, still do not have uh, in-person um, sessions or classes, or else uh, we can deploy outreaching teams to the schools uh, to help with uh, the vaccination of students. Next.
Yes, we can hear you, Dr. Lam Shun Chiu. Yes, Bureau Director, officials, good morning. First of all, I'd like to say thank you because you've had a hard time. We'd like to um, win in the uh, battle against uh, the pandemic. Well, I'd like to declare interest because uh, I'm a member of um, the um, use of Chinese medicine against uh, COVID. So I've been um, giving my input to those uh, uh, committees. I think um, the most important thing is to um, detect the infection early and then uh, provide treatment early and so on. And then uh, other than aerosol, there are also airborne transmission. And therefore, we will have to ensure that uh, the vaccination rate is high and the administration will have to seize the opportunity. I think the vaccination rate is going up. Next is about the uh, wearing of uh, face mask. I have some suggestions to make. Next, about the rapid test and also the use of drugs. There are three issues. First, uh, on the use of face mask. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, this is the normal surgical mask. But then the biggest problem is that uh, on the side of it, uh, you can have uh, um, air leaking into it. And if that's the case, it's not um, airproof. So the filtering rate uh, is over 90%. Um, but then if um, there are uh, leaks, uh, then um, it's no longer that safe unless you use uh, N95. But then um, if you uh, put it on properly, then uh, the protection would be over 99%. Uh, uh, and another thing is uh, you can also have a cloth mask uh, on top of it, or you can just um, use uh, a clipper. And then you can make sure that uh, it's uh, airtight. Well, for such explanation, Dr. Lam, Dr. Lam, Dr. Lam, Dr. Lam, can you um, use another location to explain it? Because uh, this is a forum for us to ask questions about the policy address. It's not about how you should wear your face mask. I just like the administration to introduce this uh, face mask order because uh, for the pandemic spread, that's because uh, for the infected, uh, they breathe. And then um, uh, for people inhaling um, the air nearby, then um, they would be infected. But then if everybody can wear their face mask properly, and if uh, such a uh, virus uh, cannot be leaked, uh, then uh, people can be protected. Because yesterday I was on the streets, over 90% of the people are using surgical masks. Uh, and if you can make some improvements to that uh, so that they can become um, high function face masks, then they'll be uh, like uh, wearing N95 masks. So this is something for the administration to consider. Next is about the rapid test and also the procedures is that uh, if we have uh, presumptive cases, they will have to go through the confirmative test. And there is a time gap be in between. And in the meantime, the patients might go back to the community and uh, they might spread the disease. And that's the reason why I'm asking. So for such rapid tests, uh, you're talking about uh, the specificity and that is the accurateness uh, and also uh, the accuracy and also the uh, sensitivity of such tests. The thing is, if you're tested uh, positive, uh, it's very like unlikely that uh, it's a false uh, uh, positive. And therefore, you should uh, presume that they are already positive. And also, for the PCR tests, uh, right now, there are two steps. According to my understanding, in fact, uh, the um, difference would be very small. And therefore, as soon as you are tested positive uh, with the um, rapid test, then you should in immediately go to the COVID uh, outpatient clinic uh, for treatment. I think you will have to answer the questions uh, in writing because they've, he has used up his time. All right, I'd like to say that uh, I'm very grateful. I'm speaking on behalf of many members and colleagues. In particular, my fellow constituents, I'm grateful to all the colleagues uh, at the front line of the HA. And I'm also very grateful to the members of the community because um, during the past um, years uh, or so, in particular during the past uh, couple of years, as the situation got worse, uh, people have been very tolerant. They have been uh, trying their best uh, to cope with what is happening. And I'm very grateful for that. But then we are already on the brink of everything. And then I can see that uh, for people around me and also for the constituents uh, working with me, they are already at a loss as to what they should be doing. Well, following your advice or not following your advice uh, will mean that they are doomed. 
So given the very poor situation that we are now in, we are having this fatigue, including you, I'm sure. You're also very exhausted. So can you find a way out so that whatever you do, you have to make sure that we can get out of it um, as soon as possible. Okay, I think we will have to wrap up our discussion here. And I'm grateful to the officials uh, who have been here. I think we have spent um, more uh, 30 minutes more on this. And our next item is about measures for the prevention and control of coronavirus um, disease uh, 2019 in Hong Kong and uh, to make sure that uh, we can do this in an orderly manner and also make sure that uh, people can speak in an orderly manner. So please uh, clear the uh, raise hand button um, uh, indicate uh, sh or shown on the screen, please. Members who would like to speak, please now press the raise hand button in Zoom and you'll be invited to speak in that order. All members of the LegCo have been invited to take part in the discussion of this item. So let's see how many members have pressed the button. We have a very long meeting. I don't really want to go beyond 1 o'clock, so let's see how many members. 17? Two minutes each. Uh, that will take 30 minutes. Right. For the previous item, uh, we spent more than the time we originally scheduled for to ask repetitive questions. So I would just Allow each member two minutes each. Let me read out the names. We don't have time, so I'll draw the line. Yao Wing Kit, Chen Hanpen, Matt Maygun, Tang Ka Pil, Long Man Kwong, Long Chi Wing, Elizabeth Quat, Long Hei, Maggie Chen, Michael Tian, Priscilla Long, Chen Hao Yan, Peter Shiu, Lam Shen Chiu. Yu Park Lang, Lam Shun Chiu, Yu Park Lang, Lam Chit Yun, Lai Tong Kwok. That's it. Two minutes each. Questions and answers included. So, I will invite the administration to walk us through the paper. Please be succinct, uh, if you, especially when you have submitted the paper to us. We don't have time. Secretary, Chairman, the paper has been submitted to LegCo, so I'll be as brief as I can. I'll just give you some salient points. First, the epidemic situation is such that we have outbreaks with a rapid surge in the number of confirmed cases. In the past two weeks, we recorded 2,213 confirmed cases, including 1,900 con local cases and 223 imported cases. Among the local cases, many are untraceable cases. There are silent transmission chains in the community. Around the world, the pandemic situation is still serious. The number of new cases has always been on the rise and in one week in the latter half of January, the global pandemic figure reached as high as 23 million. As for imported cases, the patients mostly came from high-risk places. Now, in face of the fluctuations, we have been upholding uh, in the principle of preventing importation of cases and resurgence of local infection in our containment strategy. And I want to emphasize, Chairman, that we w we need to adopt uh, anti-epidemic measures with precision and expedition so that with the support of a general public, we can achieve dynamic zero infection as quickly as possible. We don't want to coexist with the virus. Since the 52nd week of 2021, the Omicron mutant variant replaced Delta variant as the main mutant variant in imported cases. 
Omicron accounts for 82.3 percent of all cases with mutant strains. Imported cases are bringing a lot of pressure to our community, but we also have a measure against pre um, importation of cases. We have suspended uh, the flight uh, coming from eight countries and subject to further assessment will include more countries. We also have a circuit breaker mechanism. In other words, even if the country is not subject to a flight suspension mechanism, if there are more confirmed cases arriving from that country, the circuit breaker will be um, initiated. Between the 20th of December 2021 and the 9th of February 2022, some 42 flights have been banned from arriving in Hong Kong from other places. At the moment, we need to prevent spreading of the virus locally. We have 19 testing centers, and depending on the demand at the different districts, we have close to 40 to 60 mobile testing stations to provide services to the public. With the support and cooperation of local testing agencies, the testing capacity has been enhanced and the service providers react um, proactively. And with the support of the SAL government and also the Central People's Government, uh, there will be full cooperation. In the past few days, we have had we have tested over two hundred thousand specimens per day. Working at Source, we will provide more testing uh, stations and regular testing centers. The testing agencies have also been working very hard. In in the five consecutive days between the fourth and the eighth of February, the community testing centers and mobile testing stations in Hong Kong collected specimen from over two hundred thousand people every day. Now, one of the uh, service provider, one of the service providers, have set up a Huoyan laboratory in Mangon Shan so that we can raise the testing capacity to not less than 300,000 every day and we'll continue to step up our effort on contact tracing. It is uh, our priority. In the end of January and in February, we commissioned the second and the third contact tracing offices in Mong Kok and Sampo Kong. We trained over 10,000 discipline services colleagues leveraging on their experience. We've been able to enhance our work on epidemiological investigation and contact tracing. As of now, the contact tracing office have successfully traced over 31,000 close contacts of confirmed cases and sent them to quarantine to reduce the risk of transmission in the community. Of course, the fifth wave of the epidemic is very serious. In the fourth waves, our strategies had proven to be successful, but now with more untraceable cases, uh, it's posing a, a daunting challenge to our contact tracing effort. Nevertheless, we'll continue to work full steam, and I appeal to the public that if you're close contact on receiving notice from the Center for Health Protection, please cooperate with us. On switch surveillance, in the interest of time, Chairman, I'll skip that. It has been helpful in our anti-epidemic work. This is undertaken by the Hong Kong U team and the Environmental Protection Department. And in light of positive samples, switch samples identified, we've been uh, taking forward to RTD operations and compulsory testing. Isolation and quarantine facilities. This is an issue close to our heart. On quarantine facilities, we have the Pennies Bay Quarantine Center, phases two to four, Lei Yu Moon Park and Holiday Village, Sai Kong Outdoor Recreation Center, Pat Hung JPC Permanent Activity Center, and also seven designated quarantine hotels for close contacts 
providing about 5,400 units. We are now discussing with several other hotels so that in the short term we can provide 1,000 additional units for uh, quarantining of close contacts. Now, phase one of Penny's Bay Quarantine Center was converted into a community isolation facility on the 8th of February to isolate patients with no symptom or mild symptoms. At the same time, we kick-started the Stay Home Safe scheme. Household contacts of close contacts will first be uh, originally be sent to a quarantine facility for a four-day quarantine. Now we've changed the arrangement to home quarantine. In fact, we've changed the uh, close contact quarantine arrangement to close uh, to home quarantine as well. We'll continue to monitor the usage of our facilities. As for isolation wards in hospitals, at the moment, positive confirmed cases will all be arranged to be hospitalized in public hospitals or isolation facilities under the HA. And the HA have gradually deployed uh, about 1,200 Tier 1 isolation beds and 600 Tier 2 isolation beds in various public hospitals. And we have also um, recommissioned the Asia World Expo so that uh, the number number 8, 10, and number 9, 11, 11 um, halls are used as uh, community treatment facilities and provide 1,000 beds to receive patients with relatively stable condition and better self-management. As of the 6, 6 a.m. on the 7th of February, 1,665 patients are now receiving uh, isolation treatment. Secretary, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you've spent 10 minutes on a paper. The, this is a lengthy paper. You don't need to repeat it. Otherwise, perhaps we can set up another special meeting to allow more time for members to ask questions. Because otherwise, I don't have time for members to ask questions. Uh, I can extend the me meeting by 15 minutes only. I have uh, 17 members. Uh, you have such a long paper. I don't know how much time you need. To uh, go through it, but well, perhaps I'll pause here, Chairman. If uh, the paper has been tabled, uh, I'll be happy to take questions from members now. Seventeen members. I'll read out the name. First three members: Yeo Wing Kit, Chen Han Pen, and Alice Mac. Two minutes questions and answers included. Please, Secretary, stop um, when it reaches two minutes. If you're unable to answer the qu the uh, questions, please uh, give a written reply. Mr. Yeo Wing Kit. Thank you. Chairman, on isolation facilities, at the moment they are insufficient. May I know first of all whether we, we have reached full capacity? What about the cruises now berth at the Kai Tech Cruise Terminal? What about uh, public housing uh, states like Ch uh, Chunyang Estate that have yet started population intake? What about the uh, dormitories? Students are no longer required to attend classes. Can we use the over 10,000 dormitory units for isolation? Second, insufficient testing capacity. Can we use the Hong Kong Coliseum, the Queen Elizabeth uh, Coliseum to uh, speed up uh, testing? Because People need to wait for two or three days for the uh, testing result to uh, be available. Third point, can we use the halls in the school campuses across the territory uh, instead of concentrating um, queues in uh, sports centers? Also, we have 15 football pitches, sports grounds. Can we build mobile cabin hospitals there? Secretary, Chairman. I'd like to reiterate that as far as isolation and quarantine facilities are concerned, for quarantine, we have commenced the stay home safe scheme so the quarantine facilities can be vacated for other purposes. As for isolation facilities, we are in the process of uh, identifying more available units, be it Penny's Bay and uh, designated quarantine hotels which we hope could be converted into isolation facilities. There are also other premises such as the cruise uh, and other 
uh, premises. Next, Mr. Ben Chan, secretary. The government will be seeking assistance from the central government on uh, stepping up isolation facilities. What uh, place have what places have you identified for the construction? I think it should be close to uh, hospitals. The speaker's not coming through. Sorry, I can't hear him. Okay, just try and answer the question that he has already asked. Uh, okay. Okay, if we were to build further isolation facilities, where will they be located? In fact, the chief executive has already instructed uh, the Development Bureau to um, identify such sites. And uh, Mr. Chen's point about um, building it um, next to hospitals or existing facilities. Thank you to your suggestion. I'll pass it on. All right, uh, Chen Hang Pen, still some time to go. Okay. We have lost uh, contact with him. Okay, uh, Alice Mack next. Chairman, I'll be quick. I'm not going to criticize because uh, it's not meaningful at all. Because uh, given the current uh, situation, we just like to help. Well, for the FTU, we have already set up um, a 1,000 strong uh, uh, volunteer team to help. Okay, so have you contacted uh, the local groups uh, who can help? Second, uh, for the testing center, you don't have enough people to take the samples and so on, and the DFH doesn't have uh, enough uh, people to man the hotline. And for those uh, who are affected, uh, well, there are people and uh, trades who have to suspend their business. Uh, all right, uh, for beauticians, uh, they are no longer able to work. So have you, can you provide training to them so that they can also help with the sample taking? That would also help reduce uh, the long queues at the testing centers because uh, people are, are worried. They'd like to do something to help with the fighting of the pandemic. So will you be mobilizing such a community forces to help with uh, such efforts? Thank you. First of all, we are very grateful to the community. We understand, we have also received uh, a lot of offers uh, from healthcare professionals and also uh, NGOs uh, who have offered to help. And for healthcare professionals, uh, we'll see where we can uh, make use of them. For example, private uh, uh, doctors can also help with the vaccination and so on. And uh, Ms. Mack, you also talk about uh, the NGOs. Uh, well, the HA Bureau and also the HAD have been asked uh, to coordinate such efforts. Because whether it's at the testing centers, uh, the long queues, and also the order situation and so on, well, other than government staff and also the contractors' uh, staff, we would also need to have a lot of volunteers. So they are doing the coordination. With regard to the D of H, well, whether it's their hotlines. Well, next, um, Bill Tang, Leng Men Kuang, Leng Chi Wing. Uh, Bill Tang. Thank you, Chairman. Well, a short question for a short reply. All right, on the 24th of February is going to be the implementation or commencement date of the vaccination bubble. And I suspect that uh, many elders, uh, we hope that uh, we can achieve a vaccination rate of 60%. But then, as you might imagine, all right, even if um, elders uh, have uh, smartphones, uh, they don't know how to uh, upload uh, the vaccination record uh, to their app because uh, they don't know how to set the passwords. Uh, so my suggestion is uh, for the uh, Leave Home Safe app, uh, can we just uh, do away with the password so that they can directly upload the uh, vaccination record uh, onto the app? Because as the Privacy Commissioner said, uh, well, um, com uh, com uh, public interest uh, prevails over such uh, privacy concerns. Bureau Director is a technical issue. We will invite uh, the ITB, B ITB to respond to that because uh, in their overall design of the Leave Home Safe app, uh, to, we'll ask her uh, if that can be done. There is no time to spare because that would directly affect uh, the effectiveness of the vaccination bubble and also the Leave Home, app, uh, Leave Home Safe app. So just uh, trust me. Yes, I understand. But then we will have to uh, go back to the ITB, which is responsible for the overall design of this program. Is it like what Mr. Bill Tang just said? Uh, is there any room for some uh, uh, refining or fine-tuning? 
Yes, in fact, uh, as many colleagues have said, uh, the Privacy Commissioner has already made it clear that uh, given the p pandemic, a lot of these uh, have nothing to do with privacy. It's not like when the administration had not heard this uh, advice. So I think the situation has changed, and therefore, can you change your mindset so that we can do it more expeditiously, uh, Chairman? Uh, I agree. Yes, given the fact that uh, the Privacy Commissioner has already given her advice, uh, I think uh, I believe I think within the administration we will be moving in that direction. We will see what can be done about the apps. As Bill Tang just said, well, for the Leave Home Safe app and other functions, we will see what we can do to improve it. Next, uh, Leung Men Kwong. Thank you, Chairman. I've been hoping that uh, we can um, say a few. Uh, I can say. Um, uh, something about um, the rapid test be because uh, many people have uh, received a notification telling them that they will have to uh, take the rapid test or they will have to take the test uh, on the um, accuracy of the rapid test. I hope that I can know a bit more about that. But then with regard to um, the uh, number of uh, such kits that the administration can purchase, uh, how many have you procured? Is it enough uh, for everybody to use it? And uh, that would also help uh, reduce the time that they will need uh, to queue up for uh, PCR tests. So that would also ease the burden on the testing centers. So can that be done? Bureau Director, on the um, rapid anti-agent test, the RAT test, we are now actively procuring that. But then we also hope that you'd notice that that is uh, in the course of procurement within uh, February. In fact, every week we have deliveries. It will still take time. For example, for the RCHEs, the staff would also play a very important role. We will have to make sure that uh, such uh, test kits uh, are available for them to do the test themselves. And therefore, in this regard, we will do our best so that uh, whether it's the um, government procurement agencies, huh? we will be working very hard to procure as many as possible. Yes, uh, next, uh, Leung Chi Wing. Thank you, Chairman. Bureau Director, we are now uh, in a semi-emergency state, and therefore, in the wake of the confirmed cases and so on, when are you going to tell the community that uh, we are entering an emergency state? Will you be giving forewarning? so that we can be prepared for that. And uh, have you got uh, contingency plans in place uh, to cope with that situation? So can you tell the public exactly what the 7 million people in Hong Kong need to do in order to cope? So can the Bureau make it clear to the community so that we know what we are expected to do? Bureau Director, thank you, Mr. Lang. First of all, it's already an emergency situation, our pandemic situation uh, is seeing new highs every day. And therefore, the administration has been appealing to the public that they should stay home to fight the pandemic. Because if we continue to lead a normal life, if we just uh, go out as usual, then the spread will become faster. Because uh, after the Chinese New Year, we can see that uh, there are many family clusters and uh, the risk of the spread would also be increased. So that's very important. Second, for the individuals and environmental hygiene that has to be kept, it's not just uh, for the protection of yourselves, but also the people around you. And then for the vaccination, well, people will have to take the jab as quickly as possible, whether it's the first, the second, or the third booster jab. It's very important, in particular for the elders. They will have to do it as quickly as possible. And of course, the testing rate has increased, but then for the elders in particular, for those over 80, they need to um, uh, get the jab. All right, time's up. Bureau Director, I've told the um, members that uh, we will have to extend the meeting by um, another 15 minutes so that uh, members will be able to ask the questions. Uh, okay, Elizabeth uh, Kwot, uh, Leung Hei, and Chen Man, Chen Man Kei. Elizabeth Quarter, Chairman, I'd like to follow up on 
the use of smart technology to uh, fight the pandemic. In the earlier session, I already asked this question, but then the administration did not have time to answer that. Well, I'd just like to know. Well, for the um, uh, 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 well, um, frontline app and also the back stage app, they are equally important. We will have to use the local health code. In other words, uh, they will have to use a real identity, and we will also have to make sure that the apps uh, can trace the whereabout of the user. So that would be um, integrated, uh, and we will also have to ensure that uh, the vaccination record is uh, uploaded. Uh, but then there are loopholes, as uh, spelled out by some other members. I hope that that can be done as expeditiously as possible. Next, uh, you will have to use IT and also big data to do the track and trace. And next uh, is about the management of the facilities. You will also have to make uh, better use of IT. We've been talking to the DFH, and uh, they said that they're too busy to talk. And therefore, at the electrical um, or council meetings, uh, you will have to make use of um, advanced technology to do it. So what is the progress so far? Bureau Director. Chairman, uh, in fact, um, IT can indeed help uh, in our fight uh, of the pandemic. And uh, thanks to Elizabeth Quarter, she has given us a lot of advice. Uh, but then. Um, Given the current situation, the most pressing thing is to do more testing and also uh, to uh, treat the patients and so on, and also prevent the spread. But then in terms of facility management and also uh, at different levels of our um, anti-epidemic approach, uh, we will have to use IT to make sure that it's more efficient and uh, effective. Next, uh, Mr. Lang. Thank you, Chairman. Bureau Director, recently I received a lot of uh, complaints. Well, they've been um, confirmed, and then by the time when they reached the uh, A&E department, uh, they were told to go back home to wait. And then uh, they just uh, refused to go home, and therefore they stay there. And then uh, there are several hundred uh, such patients uh, waiting outside of the A&E department. And uh, even if they have uh, mild symptoms right now, um, their condition will get worse uh, with the long wait. And I think the situation is running out of control. So you will have to tell the public that you're not going to surrender. You will have to show us a very clear road map. So can you give us a clear, simple road map as to how many more days will be needed before you can have extra isolation beds? And how many are you going to add? Thank you. Bureau Director, thank you. We are very firm about this. So our dynamic um, zero is our policy. We will continue to work uh, on that. Uh, we will never uh, try to coexist uh, with the virus. And then uh, uh, the next question, uh, we will ask the HA to answer. He'll be answering online. Yes, uh, I'll tell you more about the bed, uh, the bed situation. We have the first tier and second tier beds, uh, and we have about 1,600. And then for the uh, temporary hospital, for the uh, HKICC, and AWE, we have already um, um, mobilized our four horse. Together, we have 1,600 beds. So right now, for the number of cases, uh, they are growing. And therefore, for those uh, who are hospitalized, uh, we have about 3,000 patients um, that are um, COVID patients. And there are many who are still waiting, as we know. And uh, in Thursday, on Thursday, we have also um, uh, used uh, Penny Base uh, Phase 2. Yes. Next, uh, Mr. Chen Man Kei, Maggie Chen. Yes, um, I'd like to ask about uh, the relevant legislation because uh, both online and, uh, well, we can see that uh, there are people selling this uh, for testing. And uh, for the suspected uh, cases, uh, they still continue to go out uh, to spread the disease. So, uh, Bureau Director, have you worked with the police to target such people? So can you um, invoke the theft ordinance and also uh, the relevant legislation to prosecute them? You would also have to publicize this uh, because these are illegal acts. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chen, uh, Ms. Chen. Thank you for the information that you've provided. Uh, in fact, the Security Bureau has been looking at uh, the situation. There might be people who have breached the law, 
and uh, they are trying to go after these people. So overall speaking, the Security Bureau will definitely be monitoring the situation closely. And of course, uh, from the perspective of uh, preventing and fighting the pandemic, we do have relevant legislation. For example, you just uh, referred to the uh, face mask uh, order. In fact, uh, under CAP 599I, there is um, this provision uh, mandating the uh, wearing of face masks. So we will continue to liaise with the Security Bureau so that uh, if such uh, circumstances are spotted, uh, actions will be taken. Another suggestion in the interest of time. Please make good use of the RTHK. RTHK is a good platform for um, publicizing the result of breaching uh, anti epidemic laws. Please make good use of RTHK. Michael Tien, Alice Mack, and Priscilla Long. Michael Tien. Thank you. Three questions. Compulsory testing notices, there should be two queues. You said that um, distributing specimen bottles in public housing estates is not as good. Now, of course, when you discuss with the Shenzhen Authority, you should uh, seek help to enhance testing capacity. Will you send more staff to distribute specimen, specimen bottles in public housing estates? About elderly residents in uh, RCHEs, can you ask the outreach teams to help provide jabs as well on a mandatory basis? It seems that you're procuring this uh, as I'm demonstrating, uh, which is very expensive because uh, according to the projections, uh, by the middle of this month, there may be 3,000, 5,000 people dying. Please avoid coke mixing. It's difficult for the interpreters. First, some deep throat saliva specimen bottles when we discuss with the mainland authorities on the their support definitely enhancing testing capacity is one issue but my understanding is that the mainland authority would like to take uh, specimens in a professional manner now the labor and welfare bureau and the department of health are stepping up efforts in vaccine vaccine rollout and they have a plan um, the point about HA, I'll defer to the HA colleague. Next, Dr. Priscilla Lang. Chairman, I understand that uh, the secretary and the sector uh, are doing a very difficult job. Now, if we have sufficient manpower support from the central authorities, definitely we will be able to mend the hole in our net. I don't need a response from you, Secretary. In terms of one country, two systems and collaborating with the mainland authorities, I hope the uh, healthcare profession uh, will bear in mind that we have great respect for you. Over the years, I have shown appreciation um, for our public health care system. But we're in dire times. In the current epidemic, we need to take a special approach. You need to speak out and reach out for help. It's all right if we adopt uh, another strategy to fight the epidemic, and a, a strategy that you may not be familiar with. I think that uh, this is, after all, the characteristic of one country, two systems. Frankly, I have friends in their 50s who passed away after getting infected in the current epidemic. So when Dr. Gabriel Leung said there should be a complete lockdown, otherwise there would be thousands of people dying. Now, if you have someone uh, close to you, a friend or a relative, young or old, you won't want anyone around you dying. Is that right? So I think we should get used to um, being flexible in our anti-epidemic strategy. It's all right even to make it an about turn if we are doing it for the people. You're all professionals. I just want to say I have great respect for everyone. We're all anxious. Next, Deputy Chair. Chairman, I have a question on testing centers. 
testing centers are bursting at the seams in different uh, centers. There are mobile te testing stations. Uh, however, in Kowloon City, the CHP issued 78 pages of compulsory testing notices involving 70 buildings in Kowloon City, but we only have two centers. We need to queue up for three to four hours. I hope the, the government will truly understand people's uh, situation now. After the RAT test, many people who test positive may still need to uh, go to a testing center for confirmation, and this will cause another health risk. Would you consider um, using other um, designated vehicles or vacant uh, coaches? convert them into mobile stations to make sure we don't see long queues outside testing stations or centers. Secretary, we need to have more testing se uh, points, testing centers. Uh, like Ms. Chan said, of course, this is uh, something we are spraying no effort in. And for testing agencies, if they have such a facility available, we will require the use of this facility and step up the capacity. At the same time, we need to step up testing capacity at laboratories to uh, fully handle the situation. And this is exactly uh, what the service providers are working on. Well, Secretary, well, if you allow I can't allow you to uh, to uh, ask uh, or interject. There is no time. On queuing, we have an electronic uh, quota this system. Next, Mr. Peter Show. A universal testing program would be an ideal situ uh, solution if we have help from the central authorities. Please do your best and uh, compel more people to get tested. But we see long queues outside testing centers. According to a member of the public, the Leave Home Safe app would uh, give out uh, exposure notifications, and people who visited high risk places didn't understand the situation and they would queue up at once. And if you visit the link provided, you need to be tested only if you had the exposure during the same time period at the same place. If the information is unclear, you will continue to see long queues. If we don't have sufficient manpower at the moment, we should give priority to people who are subject to, say, compulsory testing notices. For those who are not high-risk individuals, you should give out specimen bottles for them to get tested at home. This would cope with the resource constraint. Now, I went to Shenzhen, and then I came back and, and got tested, and so I had the experience. Uh, there is one in Leighton Hill and the other uh, near Tamar. The staff who took my ID card just took my ID card and then handed it back to me before taking the ID card from another per person without uh, cleansing or disinfecting his hands first. Now, if I am a confirmed case, I then um, somebody else could get infected. So make use make sure um, that he the staff member would use um, hand sanitizer before uh, taking people's ID cards. It's just a comment. Next, Doctor Lam Shun Chiu. Doctor Lam Shun Chiu, please switch on the mic. Is it on? Sorry. Prevention is better than cure. Apart from vaccination, we need to have highly effic effective uh, face mask. The other point about Michael Tian's suggestion, use of medicine. Prevention is better than cure, especially when we're short of hospital beds. For special drugs that uh, have been approved, the drugs can help alleviate the condition and prevent serious cases and allow patients to be discharged earlier. My question is on procurement of these drugs. Mr. Michael Tian also mentioned uh, the drugs being very expensive. Now, uh, during the epidemic in Wuhan, some Chinese medicine prescriptions have proven ex 
uh, uh, effective, and I need to declare an interest. My company is also considering uh, these um, Chinese medicine prescriptions. As far as treatment is concerned, I hope the hospital authority will be proactive in following up on the idea. Secretary, I'll defer to the hospital authority. H.A. Responding to the procurement of medicine, we have two oral drugs available. The one, the visor, the member mentioned earlier, the other is from another manufacturer. The HA has procured both drugs. Visor comes with side effects. It's not suitable for uh, all patients. It may do, uh, it may impact on the liver function, so uh, not all patients are suitable. For one of the drugs, they would arrive in March. The other, we're in the process of procurement. All both drugs will be available. Next, Mr. Yu Palang. Thank you, Chairman. Secretary. We have a long queue uh, for vaccines, even up to the 11th of March. The government should consider recommissioning the vaccination centers that have been closed. Very soon, you hold a meeting with the mainland authorities. Will you give an undertaking that a coordination committee will be set up in collaboration with the mainland officials so as to step up collaboration with neighboring cities such as uh, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, so that we can adopt the goal of uh, resuming quarantine free travel with the mainland as quickly as possible so that we can have confidence in uh, upholding our anti epidemic strategy. Let me take the second question. In November last year, the mainland sent a team of uh, healthcare experts from the National Health Planning Commission to review our work and our anti epidemic uh, measures. Now, they acknowledged our work as uh, professionals, so we have the prerequisites for reopening the border. But with the um, rapid re resurgence of cases, uh, of Omicron cases, we need to step up our effort to fight the epidemic first so as to contain the situation. Of course, at this meeting, we will raise uh, the relevant issues in discussion with the mainland on uh, their support to be provided. Vaccine, we agree it is important. On um, improving logistics for sending out supplies for private clinics, uh, we will step up our effort. Next, uh, Mr. Lam Chi Yun. Thank you, Chairman. A number of questions, Secretary. I understand you are short of staff for collecting specimens. Many HA doctors and nurses will help out when they're off duty. Will you cons will the HA consider relaxing the requirement for uh, permitting outside work and Sinovac? Vaccine, we understand that uh, you need a 30 minute waiting time after vaccination. But we all know that uh, it's very safe now. Will you spare the 30 minute waiting requirements uh, for the third jab? And also for the, those below the age of 18, when will, the, when will they be able to get the third jab? I'll invite the HA to answer one question first, and then about Sinovac, I will defer to the uh, controller of the CHP. Uh, he'll be speaking on the uh, comments and advice of the uh, Joint Scientific Committee. HA, about outside work undertaken by HA staff, we do permit outside work as long as uh, colleagues make applications. Colleagues at this stage are helping out uh, different in different areas. Next, CHP. About 30 minutes waiting time or resting time after the Sinovac jab, we're discussing with the manufacturer. Uh, a positive response is expected. We are in the process of waiting for data. For 18-year-olds uh, in the long term, they will need the third jab. They are also um, in our plan. We will make announcements in due course. Next, last one, Mr. Lai Tung Kwok. Thank you, Chairman. First. 
the government should be more focused in its discussion with the mainland. In terms of specimen collection and testing, the mainland should help us uh, enhance capacity. They should be fully responsible for testing and collecting specimen. And we should invite mainland experts to help build the mobile lab and the mobile cabin hospitals for us. There should not be any collaboration. The mainland authorities should take charge so as to avoid uh, collaboration of funding, etc. So um, the uh, A&E department is now fully utilized, uh, but then we can make use of uh, the uh, vacant school campuses. Uh, so that uh, for those uh, presumptive cases, they can go there to wait. So that uh, that can be triage. So that for those uh, with uh, no or mild symptoms, uh, they can be sent to the isolation centers. And then, other than um, using hotels uh, for those purposes, the administration can also consider if um, there are any shortage, uh, you can use existing hotel facilities because um, they can be used. Uh, to house those uh, with mild or no symptoms uh, so that they can stay there while they are waiting for treatment. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lai, for your views. In fact, um, you talk about testing and facilities increase and whether or not uh, we can uh, uh, use uh, school campuses and so on. Yes, uh, those will be uh, followed up. Indeed. What I can say is uh, we are now working on those, and we will to do that as uh, quickly as possible. Okay, we will wrap our discussion here, and thank you for um, uh, discussing with us. Uh, under item 5, AOB, we don't have any AOB. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned.